Warning. This program may contain explicit language that may be considered offensive or inappropriate to children and some adults. The following content is intended for mature mature audiences audiences only. Welcome to another evening of Talk It Out, where we uh, talk it out. Uh, my name is Ricky Z. You normally see me on uh, on Mondays with Geek It Out every other Monday at 8 p.m. where we talk about all things geeky, and you occasionally see me here on Geek on Talk It Out. Uh, social media manager, educator, that's me. Um, so we're going to be talking about culture vultures. It, when is it a cult? Uh, when is it cultural pro- appreciation versus a cultural appropriation? And then we're going to talk about some current events. But before we introduce the panel, I want to make sure you all like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. So just all you have to do is look up Whoa Nelly Media, and make sure if you're watching this on Facebook. Share this with your friends. Share this with your groups. Um, we want to grow this Whoa Nelly Media family. And we need you to help us with that. So, yes, make sure you like and subscribe and share and comment. Like, it's live. We want to hear from you. Make sure you're commenting, too. All right. So, let's get started. Because I'm woefully unprepared. I'm going to pull this sucker up. And we're going to introduce our illustrious panel. These are all returning panelists. Um, So, first, we have... Julian, Julian Ramirez is not a nerd who enjoys math and science, fantasy, and land parties. He's rather, uh, he rather does love cats, bananas, and the soft sounds of Sia. He's looking for the value of X, Miss San Diego, and the medium of life. And you can also see him every other Monday at 8 p.m. on Geeking Out. Welcome, Mr. Julian. Hello. <laughs> Hey. Thank you for having me. It's been a while. Well, a little bit. I've been on here a few times. But... Yeah, well, I mean, you know, we're just on here <laughs> Monday. Thank you for having me back. Yeah. All right. Well, it's, yeah, I guess it has been a while since you've been on Talk It Out. Yeah, Talk It Out, at least. Mm-hmm. Oh, right, right, right. Okay, so let's go on to our next panelist. Uh, we have Alex Kirsch. Alex Kirsch is the host of the podcast, Depth of Perceptive, where the truth has no bias. His podcast focuses on all social issues in the U.S. and abroad and is an interview-based podcast. Welcome back to the show, Mr. Alex. Thank you so much for, once again for having me. I always love coming on these panels. It's always a great time. Awesome. Thank you for joining us. Always. All right. Next, we have our favorite Canadian artist and entrepreneur is Don Dre Henry. You can find him on Instagram at Dre the Shadow as well as Twitter. Out of his many ventures, he has recently started a baking business to help bring joy to people through their sweet tooth during the quarantine. Welcome to the show, Don Dre. Howdy. Hey. What's going on? Hey. Not much. What are you doing up to? Oh, uh, I got me the Pfizer. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay, yes. I got my second dose. Yesterday, no, I got it yesterday. Oh, so man. like, I, I had to leave, you know, school like at nine thirty in the morning to go get it. But you know, I finally got it, and I'm I don't feel like I'm dying, so that's nice. Do you feel oh, anything? Yeah. Do you... Uh, um, no, arm, my arm feels like it's about to fall off. Like that's the main thing that I've been feeling all day. Yeah, just arm pain. Feeling that really, but like no, like long. Long. That's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've heard that it comes up a lot. Oh well, well, when I got it on my the first dose, like tired. it. Like, the, my arm hurt for at least a week, it felt like. But, like, it, I promise you it did. And then, like, it didn't help that, like, as immediately after getting my my shot, I went back to work, working with kids. And so my arm is doing all the movement and feeling all the sore. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So let's get back to introducing our panelists. So 
Yeah. We have Norman Hardman. Norman is a native of West Georgia. He stems from a family of ministers, and he is continuing the legacy of ministry started by his parents as a full-time outreach minister and entrepreneur to better serve the needs of his community. Uh, he's also the author of The Christian Man and Pornography, which speaks to the power that God gives every man to overcome addiction. Norman has a bachelor's in music education from Columbus State University School of Music, whoop, whoop, and an MBA. He and his wife, Anna, have two children, Victoria and Matthew. Welcome to the show, Mr. Norman Hardman. Again, always enjoy the time. Yay. Uh, if you guys didn't know, um, Mr. Norman and I went to the same university, first, our undergrad. We're both uh, Schwobies, so shout out to the Schwob. Um, thank you for joining us, Norman. Thanks. Good to be here. Looking forward to the convo. Yeah. All right. Our next guest is Mr. PJ Von Svon. He's our favorite Asian history historian. Like, if you have, if you watch the 24 hour live stream back in March, he gave a really great history of Asian Americans. And I think it was the immigration um, into America. It was very good. Uh, so, PJ is an associate broker with a local real estate firm. As an Asian American, he grew up on the other side of the tracks. PJ understands how important the comfort and security of having a home is and actively engages his community and his industry in promoting fair housing. And for the better part of two decades, he and his wife have called Georgia home. Welcome to the show, Mr. PJ. How are you? I'm <laughs> great. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm happy to be here. Yay. Thank you for joining us. All right. Next is someone that I love and we need to have a show together real soon because I know with you, she and I and like a couple of other ladies, we'd have a good time. It's Miss T. James. T is the chief mother of the James tribe, an avid, avid reader and K-drama enthusiast, Miss Positivity. Uh. <laughs> hey. Thank you for joining us tonight. No, thank you for having me. Yes. You know, I get down and support the homies. Yes, thank you so much. All right, and then last but not least, we have Miss Samantha Harding. Uh, she is Atlanta born and bred with two beautiful daughters. She has an edible business called Marley Bears that focuses on making the infused gummy bears, and she's a realtor. She's the go-to agent for the Atlanta real estate market. Before getting into real estate, she was an educator and founded the dance department at a local... Uh, local Atlanta charter school, KIPP Atlanta Collegiate. Besides her interest in cooking, real estate, and dance, she loves the water and is a mermaid at heart. Welcome to the show, Miss Sam. Hey guys, thank you for having me. I always enjoy it. I'm excited for tonight's topic. Awesome, awesome. Thank you for joining us, Sam. All right, so before we get into current events, I want us to take a real quick commercial break. Hey, everybody. My name's Chris. I'm Durie. I'm Ricky Z. Justin. And Julian. Have you heard about Anchor.fm? It's the easiest way to make a podcast. First off, it's free. Oh, I love free, especially when we're talking creation tools that allow you to record and edit right from your phone and computer. And Anchor will actually distribute your podcast for you. So as soon as you're finished recording, you can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many other platforms. And you can make money off of your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's basically a one-stop shop for everything you need. So head on over to anchor.fm and download the mobile app now. And make sure you come back and geek out with us. So welcome back. Our that first commercial was for Anchor.fm. This is why uh, Wonelli Media, Talk It Out, and Geeking Out use to distribute our podcast uh -huh. um, across the internet. So you can stream it on Anchor itself, Spotify, uh, Apple Music, 
and Google Podcasts, all that stuff. So uh, make sure you check it out if podcasts are your thing. And then our second one was Pretty in Pink Bundles. Uh, they get all that you need. And what do they say? It's uh, new hair is the best revenge. That's what I heard. So <laughs> that's according to them. So I, I, I guess I kind of agree. All right. So. Oh, yeah, I look. know all about it. Y'all saw me. Ooh, yes, that right. retwist. Yes, I just realized that I did not send an appointment for May with my hairstylist to retwist my hair, and I'm hurt because she is fully booked for the month. Mm. My feelings mm-hmm. are completely hurt, and look, I, I'm my feelings. I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Um, but anyways, let's go ahead and get started <laughs> with uh. <laughs> with our current events so I don't know if I want to start with this one yet I haven't gotten there yet okay so Josh Duggar from 19 and counting just got um, picked up by the feds Ooh. he just got picked up by the feds wait 19 and counting what is that the Duggar family um, they is he the dad no, no, he's not he's the dad. The he's he's, he's the big brother. Son. I suppose yeah, that because the, the dad been messed up, right? He got pedophilia messed up. Yeah, pe- picked up for pedophilia or something. Ooh. <laughs> no, I'm about Ooh. One of the brothers. So what did he, get, pick- what he mm-hmm. get picked up for? This, I'm assuming the same thing because I think he's in trouble in another state. Ooh. And it's- Ooh. Ow. Yeah. Oh, this is a recurring issue. It seems. I don't say those generational cycles, man. Mm-hmm. They don't know how to break them sometimes. What were you about to say, T? It's unfortunate, really, because the it's it's unfortunate because of the victims, right? Right. Like, if they were his siblings, then that gives them the whole other situation. They I mean, it's worse if it's somebody else. But still, if it was your siblings and mm. they didn't they didn't speak out because of you all, their their I don't want to say celebrity because they're not really not even that. But Sometimes they internalize. They're in the public eye, and, and yeah. yeah, if they're in the public eye, and like a lot of those kids have been in the public eye since they were like born, like three or four years old. So mm-hmm. yes. I mean, I agree that adds to it, but at the end of the day, like, we hear st- stories about that all the time, like, cousins, you know, or, like, older siblings, and they just, they were just doing what they were talking. I'm not saying it's right, but, right. you know, unfortunately, it's not just because they were in the public eye. That probably didn't help, but, right. I mean, unfortunately, a lot of siblings and older cousins do to their younger cousins and siblings what was taught to them. But that doesn't necessarily, you know, it's not necessarily good. Yeah, I'm not saying it's <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's not okay because of that, you know? Yeah. Right, no, it's not it okay. Kind of, well, no, I, mean, I don't think anyone is. It's just more that, of the guy. Yeah. I, I think it's because I like it's, it's, it's I, I think it's because it's not so cut and dry like this person did this to strangers. Like, this involves an entire family. And, like, it's a way more nuanced than we like to think of certain issues and circumstances. And so, um, yes, we we want justice, but at the same time, like, there are people that are going to be, that need, they're going to need some healing, <laughs> regardless of what the outcome is afterwards. Ew. <laughs> you must yeah. have just looked up his picture. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, just, I was like, Google. I'm like, oh, so I was just like, who is this man? Mm, yeah. <laughs> like, I just remembered about this, like, because I looked at my phone and I saw it. I don't remember. I guess on Twitter. And yeah, that that just I just remembered that. Yeesh. Mm-hmm. That is a hard time though, because it is something that is kind of really occurring. But it's, you know, it's something that we don't really talk about. And because of that, is why it kind of goes under the radar for for so many people and so long. You know, it's, it's been kind of long-standing, but we should probably talk about it more often. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Absolutely. absolutely. You know I mean? And but I mean, this is also comes also out of the culture of repressed sexual like education and expression and all of that. You know, so it's like you these they they're getting it where with the people that they trust. 
and as children, as as kids. Yeah. Versus, you know, versus being educated and just knowing how to express that kind of properly and then having the the space to do that without judgment as well is obviously much more helpful. You know what I mean? It's, it's it you know, if we didn't have as much negative energy surrounding sex in society as we do, it probably wouldn't occur that way. And it probably wouldn't occur under the radar the way it does, you know. People would be able to do what they need to do, you know, how they you know be able to know how to express themselves in healthy ways. But, you know, Right. Yeah, we are. All right, so we're gonna move on from that topic. What's like that? Like think about that, and like that's that's I really hard. You. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Same. Um, I feel like that's that's really that's really heavy for particularly the victims <laughs> to have to have that, especially if it's if, if once things go become completely public. So I'm I'm ready to move on from there. Um, <laughs> So, Louisiana State Representative, um, you know, suggests that teaching the good of slavery during an educational debate. Um, we won't know, say his name. We don't have to say his name, but yeah. Well, like, what are your thoughts on this? Like, um, I mean, I'm sure it's kind of a visceral, like, duh, no, but. What, at what point? What? What? The, this is where I can say the caca- the caucasity. Go ahead. Yes, <laughs> please. Well, what's the? Hang on. The what's what's the story? Place. What's the news first? What's the topic? Like what so, was he saying that was good about? He it? suggested. He suggested out loud because I read about this one and I was like, this person here. He's uh, his name is Ray Gar- Garofalo. And oh, he was that? debating for an education bill. And um, what he said was he aims to acknowledge the institutional, the acknowledgement of institutional racism and for the larger course of academic instruction. And then he said out loud, and this is quoted that he said this, if you're having a discussion on whether the, the case may be on slavery or whatever the case may be on slavery, then you can talk about everything dealing with slavery, the good, the bad, the ugly. And then he proceeded to say some more. Uh, he proceeded to say um, he's black. What, what good? What good was there from slavery? This is a black guy now. I just want. Oh. Mm-hmm. I just. See, that. Mm. Wait, I'm confused. He's it, asking what good came out of slavery. No, he's no, not no. black. I'm sorry. No. T he was, was saying exactly. if you're gonna talk about slavery, you should talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. It, it'd be very oh, interesting. Where, yeah, where was the good? <laughs> it'd be very <laughs> interesting to see what perspective he's coming from because that sounds like a little bit of the lost cause mythology. I'm mm-hmm. not sure if you. And so that kind of lost cause mythology is just a revision that says, hey, there were some good aspects of uh, the South and what happened. And, you know, it wasn't all about slavery, it's about Southern pride and all those different types of things. Um, I don't think we should ever hide um, the details of slavery. As a matter of fact, I think we should talk about the different types of slavery and compare Um, and contrast American slavery to um, slavery around the world and just kind of go throughout history because unfortunately that behavior, once again, we we started talking about behavior, those types of behaviors repeat themselves. And I know it's difficult and taboo to talk about, but it's important to talk about it. I, I don't see any good aspects of, you know, this... I mean, there are outcomes where, you know, there were strong personalities that came from, that were born out of slavery. Aside from that, I mean, I don't really see anything positive to talk about. I mean, it's 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 all based on kidnapping. Yeah. Well, I, I think... It, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, um, I think and then PJ. coming from, like, the... Uh, how do I explain this? they're not willing to give visibility in the education system without somehow trying to justify it. I like that. <laughs> yeah. And, and it also, I mean, I hate, I am in no, in no way am I defending this, right? But if they're looking at that statement can be seen purely from the lens of capitalism. Yeah. Whereas that slavery, chattel slavery built one of the most powerful 
military empires there's ever been, right? And and so this person may it's a shitty position, but it is a fact. Well, yeah. it's like it's I mean, like someone, but it's not as if wait, they wouldn't have been built on the on freedom either, on free people either. You get me? I understand that, yeah, we were able to build, it's like, you know, for the same thing for the pyramids, pyramids built by slaves. Yeah, you could have still, you could have achieved that feat with willing people as well. Well, yes, that historically is being great. challenged now. Right. But yeah, it, well, that's my point. I'm like, yeah, it's done something great, but like that's, it, it did something great, quote unquote, as great as in, 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 in miraculous in feat. Perhaps my, but what? you could have still achieved that with willing people. I, I think so I think the the, the idea is, is I don't think I don't think I find that idea. I, I understand where they're coming, like where where they're spinning that from, but it's it's still it's weak. It's weak. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's very. Weak. I mean, yes, absolutely. It's <laughs> that's just, all yeah. I'm saying. But they I, gonna, somebody's gonna roll with it. Put out there is that whatever the fuck they're saying. I'm sorry. So I whatever, whatever the Asians are trying to say about it, it's it's the weakest argument ever because it's so I've sense. heard some. Re- I've heard some really ridiculous claims by people. Everybody remember uh, Clive and Bundy, the Bundy yeah. Ranch. Mm-hmm. I remember he was out there. He says, "Well, slaves actually had it pretty good because you know we took care of them." I'm like, yes. dude, what are you talking about? Like, <laughs> that's the, that's the thing that I people treated are him like my favorite about. dog. Oh, yeah. Well, that's exactly my point. They're trying to like they're trying to like brush over. It's like, oh, it's okay. You know, it, look look where they're at now. They're so much better off. It's like. That's not how this works. That's not how any of this works right here. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, that's not a good argument to have whatsoever because, you know, slavery is a terrible thing. It's right. still going on today. It's just, you know, and I'm not trying to go over what's going, what happened in the past, but I'm just saying, like, slavery is going today. You're not going to tell me that slavery today is good and then try to tell me that slavery back then was good because it right. wasn't. There's nothing good about it, honestly. So, right. Man, people are. People... That... Good. I'm sorry. People are still being abducted worldwide right now. And I mean, and not even, but like there's actual slavery going on right now and people being kidnapped and and employed. And, you know, the big issue that I would take with someone saying that is you can build virtually anything you want to build off of free labor. (laughs) When you've got millions of people uh, and they all come free and then you uh, get their children for free as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, who, what can't you build with something like that? And so like it sets the groundwork for um, what we see now with um, multinational companies Mm -hmm. or global company corporations that go to India and that go to South America and they get cheap and reduced labor. That's why we have so much issue with immigration now is because people know if they come to America then they can get, you know, at least get paid a little bit better. But I mean, that's that's really a lower form of indentured servitude. It's it's not gone anywhere. Mm -hmm. Human trafficking is still the second largest criminal enterprise in the entire world. Labor trafficking has the largest population of people that are enslaved. But sex trafficking is the largest where the most of the money is right now. And it happens right here in the United States, like Atlanta is still a huge hub. Thank for you. Right and now. did we not just find not the biggest resource of people who came willingly to our border that we then put in cages and we relocated and can no longer quote unquote fine. Yeah. And it's horrible. Yeah. Like that I'm is that. human rights violations all over. That's just, it's inexcusable. I, I mean, I who- kind of feel like that someone saying, you know, someone went through somewhere really traumatic. Maybe they got raped or maybe they, you know, something happened and they became like a great best author based on their story. And it's like, well, if he or she would have never went through that, then we would have never had this, you know, I don't know, social rights leader or whatever. But it's like, is that is that really like. Is that what it had to? Is that what they had to go through? To, right. or they could have to, had a completely normal and healthy and, and happy still childhood, fulfill their instead. purpose, right? And not right. being traumatized and abused. You know, it's like, like someone else was saying, like, can we, can, could we have still created the economy that we created and what we did with paying people correctly? Like, we could have well. still <laughs> built what we needed to build. We just didn't on the backs of black people, and that's fucked up. Hmm. Yeah. Sorry. So you about to say something? Oh. Is it DeAndre? I don't want to say your name wrong. Dondre. Dondre. Yeah. 
Dondre had his hand raised, and then I will. Uh, I'll All right, Dondre. Uh oh, you're on mute. Uh, Hi. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Okay. So I think at the end of the day, if we're gonna go back to slavery, I mean, if it didn't happen, I could have been chilling in Wakanda today. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I think the fact that it did occur and now perpetuated a system of classism and um, like ongoing racism that we have to deal with on a day to day life because of the color of our skin, there's nothing you can simply say to justify that we're not it's not still a problem today and it there was something good about it back then it's creating an issue for citizens to like exist right and because let's be real though like all right so like yes there's this whole area era of slavery but like just because slavery ended does not mean that there were more additional troubles and roadblocks along the way mm -hmm. from where we were back then to now so, like, you know, we had Jim Crow laws, we had the Ooh. sharecropping where pretty much you were basically still working for for another white man and paying them, basically, mm -hmm. just to, to survive. Like, that, like, how is that mu any much better? Um, and then you, uh, there's so much that's happened, like, to housing discrimination and job discrimination and, and right and just things like that like all that stuff that's happened that's since then like it hasn't been like slavery and then rainbows let's we gotta remember that it hasn't been slavery and rainbows it's been well, they took us out of the cages we're still in shackles right things like that yeah i had somebody tell me this uh, about three years ago and it's, i'm not gonna say who it is but I can absolutely take his word for it. The Columbus Country Club uses prison labor for its landscaping because they cannot afford to hire a landscaper. Now, let me ask you this. When those guys who are cutting the grass get out of jail, are they ever going to be teeing off in a country club? Who is enjoying the, the, the fruits of their labor? The elite. So let's talk about this, though. Georgia, the whole state, was founded as a prison colony. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so mm -hmm. every person who is of Caucasian descent, whose family dates back to Georgia as an initial colony, no folks ain't nobody special. Like, I just, right. at least I'm setting a, a right. scene here, right? This is not, you this is you are descended right. of prisoners, right? But at least you had the basic right to be able to exist. Right. Without Assuming violence. your family didn't like move from another colony and like decided to take over some land and then like Correct. garnish, like, yeah. Savannah, that's where the prisoners used to be before it was a slave port. That's where that's it down there. They was doing it, <laughs> and so just the whole thing. Like I just I don't understand where the good is, and maybe it's because I am African American and I'm from Georgia that I'm like it's closely identified like in lee county which is in south georgia mm -hmm. it's uh right outside of albany georgia yeah albany georgia is where w.e.b du bois wrote his book the souls of black folks in lee county they were still lynching people up until like maybe the 80s and 90s okay there's a tree there that's out there <clears throat> that they used to hold picnics and if anybody knows the definition of what a picnic where picnics came from um where they used to hold picnics and, you know, eat that bland potato salad and probably some fried chicken that somebody's mammy taught them how to make. Right. And watch a legend. Right. Still going on. Mississippi. I know someone personally who is, you know, in close age to me, maybe like a year or two older. His best friend was lynched in Mississippi, like in mm. high school. Mm. As a child, We're talking about a teenager here. And so I can't find what good it is that he speaks of. I'm sure it was beneficial to him and his people. Mm -hmm. um, I misspoke, he was not African American. He was uh, other than <coughs> that. And um, I just, I don't see what the good is. And now I'm not villainizing all Caucasian people or anybody who is not of a marginalized identifying uh, ethnicity, right? right. But I'm saying the good might be here for money, but for everything else, it's like 
down there. The bar is on hell. The people. Yeah, yeah but, but that the, money is what drives this country. Mm -hmm. Money is what powers this country. And I think we're starting to see that crack because a lot of the younger generation are, are, are less attached to what money was bringing us previously. I mean, we're seeing, you know, we're seeing a lot of economic uh, downturns over the last couple of decades. And, and I think younger folks are just not as enamored to the American way of life as the generation before know. mine. Don't want to do the it. American dream. The yeah. The you know, you know the pull yourself up by your bootstraps and the. Well, I heard somebody say we don't can have and work boots. yourself to death. Essentially, <laughs> yeah. we not buying the bullshit, right? right. We got boots for no one. <laughs> Mexican got boots. <laughs> better than me, then. No, C -C. but like, C -C. <laughs> but like um, <laughs> the and you know the the idea of um, what an American family looks like that that central unit family it's like we there's it's all that stuff is breaking down and you can see if that's you can decide if that's good or bad or not but it's it's we're not holding on to that american dream anymore it's it's a fallacy yes oh yeah it was actually a fallacy back then because yeah. i mean yeah. you had so many um people that had uh two families mm -hmm. they just kept it on you know hush you yeah, know yeah. um there were forced forced abortions um you know just it's okay i'm just i'm just gonna hush because Go when, on, people, Norman. People, Come on. no i'm just saying people talk about going back to the good old days and it's mm -hmm. like the good old days were good because they didn't spill the tea i mean that's right. the only reason that they were yeah, good yeah, yeah. but when you start to go back and uncover like all the craziness that really existed you know like it, it it's just it's just dumbfounding you know what i mean just to go back and see like you feel like history has kind of covered up a lot of things or or basically romanticized a lot of things not really telling the truth about them and you wonder why we're dealing with the issues that we're dealing with now like right. um when we came into everything that was going on like i went on a craze of like kind of studying history and um one of the things that i noticed about and you know, PJ, you may be able to jump in on this, but in the uh, late 1800s, uh, 1900s and 20th century, when you had um, immigration, you had a lot of gang wars just between your immigrants that we don't talk about. And so we tend to think that, you know, like gang culture was birthed by like African-Americans and Hispanics. It's like, no, like it was forced by immigration and people living on top of each other, not having access to opportunities, not having access to uh, labor unions and all these different things. And since they didn't have um, opportunities, they fought for them. And so when well, eventually- and Norman, if I may, let, yeah. let's not blame it on the immigrants, but the, the no, no, white not, not racism their fault. that they yes. moved into, that forced them right. to live on top of each other. Correct. It, I don't mean that to say that that's their fault. That was not their fault. They came here because of opportunities. I mean, a lot of people were trying to get away from famine uh, or trying to get away from uh, drug infestation, different things. And so America just happened to be a land of opportunity. But because, you know, um, colonizers did not want to let people into these labor unions, they had to force their own way in. I mean, that's what the an Italian mob was or you know, a triad was because they were able the to. Irish. Oh, the, the Irish, Irish right? Mm -hmm. Gangs of New York, right there. <laughs> yeah, that's what that was all about. I mean, yes, they were, you know, doing crimes and things like that, but they were just taking advantage of opportunity, making, creating opportunities, really, and then cycling it back through their communities. There's a lot about history that we are not taught, and I acknowledge this. There is a lot, and like uh, I was saying this like uh, last night, actually. Uh, I was where it's all like just. BSing on the Discord. What what's what are some of the things that I was taught in school was like how we need to revere people like Christopher Columbus. Christopher Columbus is not to be revered. Right. We were taught things about like how you know how everything was fine and like how when the Pilgrim first came here they got along with the Native Americans. No, they pretty much slaughtered the Native Americans. It's things like it, I look at history like this. History is not meant to be politically correct. It's not meant to, you know, make us feel good. It's meant to tell us the story of what actually happened. And I feel like, you know, I'm just going to use the term. We whitewash everything. 
But of well, course, the it's like story they say, yeah, of the yeah. people that conquered. Let's be yeah. clear. They, oh, they the winners. Yeah. The narrative yeah, of the people. That's what that I was going to say. The victors write the history books, mm -hmm. and that's 100% accurate. And I'm not saying it's a good thing. I'm saying it's something we need to fix, honestly. We need to tell because there are people that are from Tulsa, Oklahoma, that don't know about the bombing that took place in Tulsa, Oklahoma. They're from and they're there. Black. <laughs> exactly. Wall Street. Yeah, the, exactly. the Tulsa riots. Yeah. It's that's my entire point, though. It's like I didn't know about that until a couple of years ago. That's pretty yeah. sad. I'm how many, 38. Years like, old. how many of you, those folks it. that live in Florida, know about Rosewood? I mean, just yeah. something like that. Yeah. Yep. I. It's it's things like that that I feel like we need to tell the story. All right, we need to tell what happened because it's it's better for people to understand. Our country had a lot of messed up times, and we're. St People are still experiencing those times to this day, but it's just well, hiding it doesn't make things look better. Honestly, we well, should. The problem is that they erased it so much that there's yeah. not there's nobody left to tell it. Right. Exactly. Just think of how like, much. If how much there wasn't stuff the is... Rosewood movie, for example, if that mm -hmm. that movie wasn't around, who would have mm -hmm. been left to tell that story? Yep. Right. It wasn't even recognized until the so, '80s, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's not it's not we. I, I believe that everyone on the panel agrees that all the stories need to be told. Like we need to talk about yep. how um, here in the Southwest, the Mexico, New Mexico was actually a part of Mexico that yep. was just taken, right? taken, Bullshit. okay? Bullshit. We need to talk about why the, the brown people here who are of Mexican descent, Latin is such a broad term, right? Because that covers a lot of different people. So right. I want to speak specifically to the Mexican people who came here or who were already here to right. be told that they were now an immigrant, but they were born right here in New Mexico. Right. Native Americans. You know yeah. I live 45 <laughs> minutes away from a reservation, mm -hmm. right? And the if you could see it, oh. it would break your heart. But yeah. at the same time, the pride that they still carry and that mm -hmm. they still have it's just a whole different kind of thing. And so, I mean, I say all that to say because I don't want to get on the soapbox and I don't want to keep us stuck on this um, topic because we could talk about this a whole Forever. episode. But I say all that to say just like, as we learn the stories, like we can say it's important all day long, but if we're not sharing that stories with our kids, like somebody, my son had on a shirt yesterday that said like, Maya, Malcolm, Langston, and somebody else. And a friend of mine who, her parents, she's like, Guatemalan or something like that, Guatemala or Argentina. And she was like, oh, your son knows who likes to use this? Sebastian knows who likes to use, likes to use this? And he's like, no. And Aww. I, me, I felt like I failed my son because it's my responsibility to teach him that. It's not the school's responsibility to teach him that. You know what I'm saying? So while we may feel like that, we have to continuously tell those stories that aren't being told so they don't get forgotten. So that even if history doesn't teach it, it still gets taught. Right. And then so, while well, you're I teaching your kids, fight for the schools to start teaching it too. Yeah. I was going to say, I love the movement this year. I mean, I know a lot of it was um, uh, initiated because of all the, the climate that we're in. I don't, I don't care <laughs> as much why they did it, but I really mess with a lot of companies that came out and celebrated Juneteenth versus July 4th. I mean, there were companies that started giving their employees Juneteenth off versus, well, maybe not versus July 4th, but like in addition to July 4th. And like, I think that's really important because, you know, we, we as a country celebrate a lot of stuff, Columbus Day, July 4th, Thanksgiving, you know, that is like innately indigenous and inherently, yeah, just like shitting on indigenous people and um, I I don't care if it was dollar driven or not. I mean, that's how we get people to listen to us is by dollars. So, you know, whether it was dollar driven or not, I love that all these companies came out and, and tried to like support Juneteenth. And I hope we continue to do that. So I, I want to add like some elaboration on this uh, comment from Ed Rogers. He said something about not in the South. I think it was about, um, you know, what's taught in a history class in the South or just taught in, in the South about history. Um, my question would be, are you talking about like word of mouth 
because let's be real, like all the tea that you're going to get from back in the day, you're going to get back from your elders if you're there to listen to them, if they're there to tell you. So like that's one thing, but like as far as as someone who I moved to Georgia when I was in when I was in 4th grade, so I've gone through <laughs> Georgia history in in the state in uh, oh, yeah. Alabama. Fifth, right. Like I've I've gone through Georgia history and and American history in in Georgia, and there's nothing mentioned about the Tulsa riots. I can tell you that much. There is nothing mentioned about Rosewood. There's very little mentioned about like destruction of Black communities between slavery and civil rights. The Camilla massacre. I didn't learn right. about it until I went to Albany State, and that's because Camilla is like 20 minutes away. Mm-hmm. Well, just recently, like I think it was like in North Carolina, it wasn't a teacher just busted because they were uh, playing like slaves and slave owners or something like that in the classroom or something like that. I'm like. It's- like, what kind of moron do you have to be? It's like, yeah, this will go over well. I'm sure everybody will. <laughs> well, I mean, that, I, we're, that just we're just moron. now starting to acknowledge yeah. that we need to take down these Confederate monuments. Right. This Which weren't, true. like, create were, that weren't built, like, right after the, the Civil they War. They were built until the Civil Rights Movement. And in white response people are <laughs> to the Civil Rights it. Movement. They yeah. They were mad. They were so mad. Yeah. Yeah, there, there's a lot with that. And here's the thing. Those monuments, the reason people are pulling them down is because they're protected by state ordinance. So even though they're privately owned, <laughs> they, they work those things in to be protected by, you know, state. So there are certain things and um, ways that you have to move about in order to even address them. But um, if you're want, if you want to find out more information about this, go to archives, you know, go to your school district ask them for archives, go to your libraries, go to your universities and colleges, go to these different places, go to the news, uh, whatever, um, Get your local first newspaper. Sources. Yes. <laughs> they, here's the thing that I found out though history is hidden. The people that they want to be, they want to keep the archives. It, they are not destroying the history, which is why people are nationally able to go in and pull up these old stories and have documentation for them. So like, if you really are like wanting to do some work in your city and know and knowing where to start, go to the archives and ask for permission for some of that stuff. So like, they're not necessarily hiding the history or destroying it. They just want to rewrite the narrative of it. I think the part we're not really talking about the, the lobbyists and the, the these committees that, that are at the like the state levels that are forcing the schools to teach a particular curriculum Texas right and so like so so primary history education is pure indoctrination and propaganda whether we think it's good or bad that's what it's doing it's teaching a particular narrative to build a good american once you're out of it most of us don't go looking in the archives it's there the information is there but by that point we're we're stuck in that rat race. We can't go to the fucking library because I can't miss work. That's right. Yeah, that's right. That's why everything's yeah. online. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, that 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 yeah. darn internet and social media. Uh, that darn internet they're trying to right get hold of. Yes, it's, and I totally had a thought process and I completely forgot it. Yeah. Why? I totally forgot it, but I was and I was just thinking about this, um, just you know, like education in general and what we teach, you know, about our history and like I'm just thinking about how we just started talking about like this one politician was talking about the the good of slavery and like how like how history is so um, censored. Honestly, it's so censored. Tailored, very tailored. Right, to the point, like, some like you wouldn't believe me, believe, like, the things that we learn that later in life, not from a history book, <clears throat> not from, um, was it Macmillan or Harcourt, Texas book company tries to tell us, um, just from, like, research and, like, and, like, you said, the archives, so, yes, thank you for that. Um, I thought you were going to say something about Tim Scott, my bad. Oh! <laughs> Who's that? No, we can move on. No, no, no. I got a few minutes. Come on. 
I'm good. Oh, oh, okay. This is oh. personal. This is real tea. Oh, oh. oh okay. I said in the private chat. How long y'all been sleeping? How long y'all been sleeping? <laughs> Let me Google. That? There is that, the fact that there's no racism right now in, in the country. Right. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Okay, yes. Yes. So that was that was the um, senator or congressman. Senator. Senator, senator yeah. who did the rebuttal for the Republican Party. Because um, Black senator. Biden. Yes. yes. Yes, black senator who did the rebuttal for the for the um, what is it State of the Union that Biden did yesterday, um, talking about how he has dealt with more um, discrimination from those that are progressive, calling him Uncle Tom, and apparently he's he's been called the the N word too, but it's it's all from progressives and that there but there is no racism in the United States. My dude. Uh, he's getting a really fat check, so I mean, it must be nice. <laughs> uh, Money, like Kanye West said, and I quote, even if you in a Benz, you still a nigga in a mm-hmm. coupe. Okay. I mean, it doesn't matter I mean, how much money you have, they're still going to identify you as what you look like point blank period especially if yeah. you're marginalized oh absolutely um, but it doesn't matter to him he's still gonna get what he's gonna get and he's gonna still live in a, in a protective elevation outside of outside of the repercussions of that you know, you know what I mean he's not he's not gonna live the life of your of your average black man so to him it doesn't really matter until but, I mean you but perfect, even but still he's use the perfect hold, 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 for, for the Republican soundbite hold, hold on really. so so PJ what, what were you saying again I said until they're done with him Right. I mean, there's, we, we have those, um, what I saw the funniest TikTok. I know I've started to get into TikTok lately, (laughs) but like someone was talking about Candace Owens and you know what? Um, just talking about how like, you know, can you really be mad at Candace Owens? Because she's totally getting the bag from being, uh, one of the few black people that a a Republican, someone, a conservative can recognize and will, you know, she makes that she makes her money that way. She does. I mean, she um, she makes her money like pandering to the conservative base, and so um, I I'm mean, if if pandering to the conservative base is how you get um, a seat at the Senate, I mean, okay. My mom always told me that all money ain't good money. It sure yeah. ain't. No. My biggest problem is this: is that you're pandering to a lot of things that that, that have cost people like lives and things. Like we we talk about the pandemic now and so much hindsight and stuff, but like we literally like people fucking died. Like you know what I mean that all 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 of all of the the political runaround that they did over it about throwing out the throwing out the whole the whole pandemic plan that was already there that we just decided not to go with and 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 leaving it up to the states and the memo so that they can so that the democratic states can flounder purposefully. Like okay, oh I'm doing that for the states, but what about the people who fucking died for that? For you in order to, to 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 implement that in order to make that happen to create that political climate calling it a hoax don't wear masks the whole same nine. and then norman that's that's my only biggest problem with it i'm like not kind of it can so you played into that no unexcused well i don't i don't think she's just playing into the fact that she, i mean i don't think she's playing into it just because she is getting a bag i think that is definitely helping but I think a lot of y'all who have seen me on the panels before know my opinions on racism. And I've said this multiple times, anybody born in America is racist. And what I don't say is literally anybody. And that means sometimes black people can be, because the way racism exists in this country is foundational. It's in our systems, it's unconscious. So that means there are black people that are being socialized to hate themselves and skin folk ain't kin folk there you go and so i you know i don't yeah obviously the money helps but i saw this one um dude and he he kind of he was a black guy and he was like we can't even be mad at the candace owens of the world because like some of us have to start embracing our our weird cousins like there are there are you know I think, I mean, this is very layered, so I don't want to get too in depth with it, but 
obviously there's a narrative of how to be black in America, right? And so if you don't fall into this stereotype or you don't project what, you know, what blackness is, if you talk proper or you sound white, you know, you know, you get that backlash. So <clears throat> in some ways he was saying, and this is not me, I'm, I'm very white. I cannot speak on this personally. I'm just reiterating what he said, which is, <clears throat> You know, hey, is that from inclusive, inclusive randomness? <laughs> That's financial. Yes. Yeah, so, so you know, he was saying like, in in turn, we almost as a black culture have created the Candace Owens because there are black people that don't fit into this black narrative, and because of that, sometimes they get um, ostracized, especially in the black community, and so. I'm not saying it's right, but I'm also pointing out the fact that I don't think it's just the money. I think it's the condition of, um, you know, black people can still be socialized to be racist in a racist country. And um, that combined with the fact that, you know, uh, she's getting attention for it when she was not getting attention just being herself or I, I don't know, but to his point, he she wasn't getting attention you know and being recognized in in the black community and now she's now she's getting attention speaking out against it of the people that kind of like shamed her or didn't accept her so again i'm not black i can't fully say that but um i'm just reiterating what i saw and i thought that was an interesting point too norman then julian yeah so i'll be as brief as i can and, and you're right, um, there's a lot of directions and there's a lot of nuance, right? And I love what you pulled up, um, PJ, with not your um, model minority because um, sometimes they will pit minorities against one another to their benefit or individuals within a particular group against the group, right? So this kind of happened with uh, Herschel Walker, Walker as well because you get somebody who is, let's say, a black individual and you put them up and they say, look, I struggled. I came from a single parent household. I applied myself. I made it out. And so to the people who can identify with the, with that particular struggle, then they say, well, that just negates everybody else, regardless of how many people um, did not make it out. Right. And, and they, they ignore all the other statistics as it pertains to people struggling in those positions. And I, I do try to be fair to say that, you know, black people in America are not the only ones struggling. And there are some white people in America who are struggling worse than some black people individually, right, as individuals. But um, I try not to look at individuals as much as I look at, you know, what's going on holistically and looking at stats. So when you start to look at murder rates and how people are treated when you start to look at um opportunities for education and, and you start looking at um economic disparities that's to me where you, the rubber meets the road because you get away from looking at individuals and say okay i'm not a statistic great you know you're not everybody goes to the nfl so i mean just that's that'd be just like michael jordan saying you know i made it to the to the the top of the the uh, the NBA and became a <laughs> Hall of Famer. You can do it too. The, the, the Every, exception, everybody, not the rule. Yeah. You, you, so it, that's a that's not a good argument, is my thing. And so I just make up a word here. I loathe tokenness because I think that that's exactly what it does. Is it calls people who are on the outside who maybe are not going to do the investigation to say, oh, okay, great. That's all I needed to clear my conscience. Now we can move on. Move on. All right. Uh, Julian. Um, sorry, I kind of actually lost my train of thought. I was listening, so I, and I forgot what I was going to say. Now. Uh, oh, something close to, okay. So, oh, actually it was, like, it was very close <laughs> to, it was, it was in, in response to, um, uh, like the Candace Owens. I, I kind of, all right. So I have to say, my perspective has changed a little bit after what Sam said. Um, and I do not still excuse her though. <laughs> okay. So I do can, I, if anything, it's worse because I feel like I can relate to it more. Um, so like I, I you know, I feel, I feel like I've, I've, I myself has, have 
grown up in a like white suburban middle class area as like one of maybe five brown people and no lies like maybe 15 people of color in in the whole school kind of a thing most of them were Asians, so <laughs> out of the actual like brown brown folk there was like five of them but i still i still put them in there with us because you know they still suffered but my point we're is brown like, folk just, too but but I, exactly they still so i take them i take them anyway but so my, my point is just like i understand like, just where like that comes from. i <laughs> stop take it i'll take it but like um, I understand, I understand, because like I understand like being conditioned. I I did okay, so I don't usually. Okay, so this uh, I don't normally talk about this one, but it kind of it fits, so I'm gonna like throw it out there. But like I remember very distinctly like hating my skin color, and like and it's funny because like it was a very different. It was I had a it, an ex, I had like an experience that like it was very it, the contrast was very obvious. My brother looks kind of just like me. He's just taller. And then white, essentially, like he's light skin. He's a light skin. He's a light skin Latino olive versus me. And so, like, we just got entirely different treatments and different acceptance. And it was very stark. And it's like that. That you know, it's like I remember growing up just like disliking, you know, being Latino. I didn't like it. I didn't. Not only that, I, I had a very racist idea of Latinos, which I know where I got it from. My peers and the people that I knew. So it's like I I, under, I understand where she's getting where she comes from like being raised different and then being ostracized and stuff because at the same time like I got I remember also being very um, like I didn't speak Spanish I, very well so like I'd always go to Ecuador with my with my grandparents like when we were kids every year um, and so I can like speak the language and I remember getting like picked on picked on for that you know and so that, I get that so like your community ostracizes you and like at some point but you have to you know. I think at some point in your adult life, you realize, though, that, that that's just kind of shit that happens, but you shouldn't perpetuate racism in the name of that. If anything, connect more with your community so that you can understand it better and then relate to it better because there are people within your community who are still going to want to connect with you. You just have to, you know, you, start, you, know, you can't, you can't let, their, let a, few of their, a few people who have ostracized you speak for the whole. Um, I, I'm going to go to T and then I'm going to go to Sam because uh, Sam has a current event that she wanted to talk about. So T, then Sam. Um, so I, I wanted to speak on the top of the original topic about there being no more racism in the U.S. and then the people who are saying it. But also I wanted to say this, right? Based upon having someone who is African-American speak about their experience on uh, other African-Americans, based on their political party, that is a real life thing. Just because I am African American, it does not mean that I have to identify with a political party. Here's the thing, they're both lying, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. Yeah. One's lying, the other one's not telling the truth. Neither Man. one of them is for us. Yeah. However, one of them will do more things to appear like they are for us to get your vote. And then yeah. they're still gonna do what they wanna do. The and other one's just gonna tell you flat yeah. out, the other one's just going to tell you flat out, hey, I don't agree with it. I'm not doing it. And I prefer that kind of person because I am that kind of person. I'm not going to smile on your face and be like, I'm going to promise you that I'm going to give you everything. And I'm going to cancel these student loans because Uncle Joe, I'm still waiting. And I'm going to do all of these <laughs> things. And then you do like two of those things. But then the agenda that you really wanted to get passed gets passed along. Right. So okay. that's that. Then the next thing is the there is a lot of segregation in every community right when you don't fit that idea or the stereotype of what that person should be or should look like right for example I, I think PJ was talking about when we did the the Asian forum how people assume like or make jokes about oh you're supposed to be good at math it's like yo I'm not that kind of Asian or somebody said it and it's like we as African Americans we do that mm -hmm. we if we see a person that's Asian we walk up to them and be like, yang, 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 yang. first of all, how do you know that they speak Mandarin? This is the first thing. You're assuming that they're Chinese. But they're probably not, okay? Because there really are not a lot of identifiable Chinese people, correct? Right. Most of the time, the people that you're going to see are going to be like from Thailand or from the Philippines, right? Those aren't even the languages that they speak. That's, right. Those aren't even the languages they speak. But we do stuff like that. Or we see somebody who is brown. And assume, oh yeah, Julian's a Mexican. 
I just found out today you're from Ecuador. How cool is that? You know what I'm yes. saying? But we'll start doing. Oh, you must like beans and salsa. I That's mean, not we, we got it. We got it. We got it. Wait, wait, wait. I will eat rice and beans every day for the rest of my life. But you know what I'm saying? Like, but like, you don't have to assume. Like that. So, right. But so we don't. do stuff like that. And so, <laughs> so that, so it just ties. <laughs> but, yeah, like, uh, Kamala, not one of us eat the baby. <laughs> Oh, she close oh. but no cigar. Ooh, Again, that's a, that's I, a whole other topic. Yeah, <laughs> politicians are they're they're there to do that. I'm not particularly sold on anybody's uh, personality because I don't know what you like outside of that. Right? right? This is your job. This is a facade you have to put on to get what you need to get past. I don't know if y'all have seen Hamilton, but every time I see politicians, I always think of the room where it happens. Like, right. <laughs> He said he got to do what he got to whatever he got to do to get his right. uh, plan on the Congress floor, okay? And so I'm just I'm just trying to be in the room where it happens. That's but, it. Well, because I mean, I think there's going to be so much stuff. Like we segregate our own people amongst. For, forget the light skin, dark skin thing. How many of us grew up being or grew up around the weird black kid? You know, the one that like rock music, dressed like a goth was not into basketball that was me. right well, like no, i was no. half i was half or not into like whatever like i love rock music i love country music i go hard for country music like i like korean music i like all kinds mm-hmm. of stuff right but i was even like that in high school but then i grew up in the hood so i was yeah. expected to be a certain amount of hoodness but that also really wasn't me. Like, I'm not trying to fight. You see this face? I'm 5'2". And I was like a buck 15 with a wet t-shirt on. Who I'm finna beat up, <laughs> realistically speaking. Now, I'm not gonna let you punk me, but who I'm finna be just out there brawling with? Right. Uh, nobody, because I'm too smart for that. <laughs> like, <laughs> do you, so recently, we have to do a, a better job of that, of not saying like, oh, that's the weird black guy, just because he into whatever, whatever. Like, maybe you're the weird one. <laughs> We got to let people be their authentic selves and go from there. Um, I'm, Sam, go ahead and quickly talk about your uh, your current event. So this is mostly for people in the city of Atlanta or if you work in the city of Atlanta or wherever tied to the city of Atlanta. I know we have a panel of people that are from everywhere. Um, but basically, there's a really big fight that's happening in the city of Atlanta. <clears throat> there was a jail that was um, slated to be shut down and turned into a basically a center of like restorative justice and hope. So if if y'all are outside of Atlanta, a lot of the recreation centers a, a couple years ago, well, maybe like five or 10 years ago, city of Atlanta changed their recreation centers to be called centers of hope. So they slated this jail to be closed down and they promised the community that they would basically reopen it as a a restorative kind of like center for hope and resource center for people. And um, just, just, just a way to kind of like help the community instead of locking them up. Um, So this, this fight has been going on for a really long time because now, uh, certain people are trying to open that back up as a jail and they're saying that it's gonna be good to protect the community because they're gonna um you know be able to lock up criminals but the the criminals that they're gonna be locking up i mean let's be personally and i don't know how everybody feels about this but personally we know that who they're gonna be locking up is black people and um, and they're going to be locking them up for nonviolent criminal offenses. Um, so they basically said, hey, we're going to shut down this jail and open it as a resource for the community. And now a lot of rich white people are coming in and trying to fight that. Um, and so they're trying to reopen it. And uh if you can if anybody's watching i'll drop the information in the comments below but if you can there's a way you know we talk about the election and your voice being heard and whether you agree with what i'm saying or not at the end of the day the way your voice can be heard is you call into your council members and um i'll put the phone number in the link um in the comments 
But you literally call in on these topics that they're about to vote on, whether it's this topic or something else. You call in, you leave a voicemail, and you you vote. Like you as the city votes on the voicemail. And then base they they literally have to listen to every single voicemail and tally what people say. So there's a big movement in Atlanta of um I want to say just rich conservative people that want to keep this jail open. They are calling in in droves and and this is why this issue keeps getting tabled because we need more support. So it's good that we went out and voted. It's good that, you know, Georgia is making a change and that's great. And we talk about all these, you know, last week's topic was voter suppression. It's bigger than that, right? Like once we get these, I mean, to T's point, like both parties, neither party really looks out for black people, right? But it's not about if they're gonna, like it's about making them, making your voice be heard. And whether you believe this is a good initiative or not, I'm just encouraging everyone and anyone who has ever been tied to the city of Atlanta, even if you live outside of the city, you can say, I grew up in the city and this is an issue that I'm aware of. You can call in before Sunday at 7 p.m. and they literally have to tally every voicemail they hear. And so um, I just you know, whether this is something you believe in or not, like, I just think it's really important to talk about because this is how we get our voice heard either way. All right. Well, thank you, Sam, for that update. So I want us to go to a quick commercial break before we get into our main topic of culture vultures. So be back soon. We are here today on site at one of our projects. I'm a developer and entrepreneur in real estate. And what excites me most is seeing the properties come from the ground up. You know in development, you have to grade the ground first, you have to pour the footers and make sure that you're building on the found, solid foundation. That is very important because you wanna make sure that your structure can be supported by the foundation that you're laying. That's the same thing that happens in life. You wanna make sure that you're starting with a solid foundation in education. That's why we host our educational services, to make sure that you are going in the right direction to learn, to build, and so that you can grow to your real estate portfolio. All of these things and more, we provide resources at itsjessicamyers.com. All right, so that was uh, Rim Alternus uh, Shadow Run that airs every uh, Tuesday with one of our um, our repeat panelists, uh, Danny, and we, of course Jerry. He plays a mage. Um, you can find that every Tuesday, and then we also have Jessica Myers. She is in real estate, and she's been doing some really big things this year. Um, so good on her. So. Um, before we go on to our main topic, I wanted to make sure that you guys know if you would like to be a panelist on Talk It Out, uh, make, feel free to email us at admin, so it's A-D-M-I-N at woenellymedia.com. Wo is spelled W-O-E-N-E-L-L-Y. Um, so yes, hit us up. Or if you are friends with Jurie, uh, then definitely hit him up on Facebook Messenger or however else you normally reach out to him and we'll try to get you on the show all right so we're gonna start with our topic our main topic of culture vultures and um so this episode was supposed to be like uh, hosted by our favorite person mo um but it's funny i was listening to my favorite podcast to listen to like on the road is um the read and one of the things that they were talking about as part of, for like, their hot topics was Justin Bieber mm. recently got mm. um, his hair locked. Mm. Um, and, you know, the, the pictures of it. And, of course, 
I have, you know, as someone who has her hair locked, um, I just, this comes up a lot with hairstyles that are, um, typically protective styles for black people, for, uh, generally kinky coiled hair, which usually inhabits a black person's head, um, and, like, the... The, this whole thing where there are people that just, they like to try it out, they try out the styles, and like yeah. they, and it's like it's clearly not meant for your head. It's clearly not meant for your head. Why are you going through this? And then why is it when you do this, instead of it looking like thuggish or ghetto for a black person, it looks cool and trendy. edgy and trendy Fashionable. for you? So like, cause you know, someone had to been like, you know what, Justin, man, you look good, man. Like this is this is gonna be great. Like this was a, this was the right choice to do. And then of course, there's someone that was like, man, he looks like a damn fool. But I'm not gonna say anything because he's paying my car note right now. Yeah. Like, like so. So my my question is, at what point, like, what is the culture vultures are like? What at what point is it going from appreciation to clear on appropriation? And there, if there is even a real line between the two, to be honest with you, I like think there can be. Oh. So, oh. Yeah. recently, also at a resurfaced in the Justin Bieber realm, Yeesh. was. <laughs> I'm mad that he has a realm. <laughs> right? Are you a believer? God no, he got kicked out of my country. Uh, um, <laughs> I got my cootie shots before that stuff happened. I don't. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. I'm just, just talking about I'm over it. I've been over him for a while. Mm -hmm. So when he was a kid, after his debut, um, there was a video of him pretty much referencing support to the KKK and re like rewording his song "One Less Lonely Girl" to "One Less Lonely Nigga." Ooh. Yes. And that recently just resurfaced. I remember it was posted on TMZ way back. Because remember, this kid came out in 2009. <laughs> so, um, for I think there's a certain type of allyship necessary at the same time to avoid being a vulture of culture. Um, there's definitely no appreciation there when you see where his mentality was back then. I mean, he was a kid, but still ain't funny because that shit was recorded and posted. Yeah. Someone taught you that that was okay. <laughs> right. Yeah. Someone thought that someone thought that was okay and taught you to think it was okay. Uh, Julian, then T. Okay, Just hold so it, T. Just hold it, T. I hold think it. I think that there is a fine line, but it's also very situational. It's very case by case. I have to say, you know, yeah. because. Um, because I, I, as an artist, I know, I see, and I appreciate when other artists are actually drawing from and being, you know, creating something inspired by another culture and things like that. That is, I, I think it's beautiful sometimes when it's done properly. We happen to know Justin Bieber's not that person, so like that's why that's why I say it's very case by case basis. I look at every time that he's faced this. I mean, he's he's and we talk about this now with the locks. What happened when he was when he sang Despacito and then he, and then he was singing it live and then he's right. and then he didn't even remember the fucking words. Like you're you're making mad money off of this fucking song. You're making mad money off of this fucking song in Latin America. That song is fucking fire. You're making mad money off of this fucking song. You're making a crossover off of this fucking song and you don't even bother to, to learn the words in Spanish? Fuck you, man. Sorry, no. Nah. Okay, so it's like, it, it's just his mentality and things. Like, we already know where he's coming from. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Not my, not my kind of fan. Right. But his new <laughs> album, though, is not terrible. So his songs are actually <laughs> fucking killer and I hate it because I'm like, oh, they're so well produced. What is my listening to? <laughs> no, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna come back to that, I'm gonna come back to that album. I'm gonna yes, come back to, to that it. album. T, T and PJ. I'm yeah. able uh, to separate, I'm able to separate a person from their art. Right. That's the other thing. Exactly. It's like his art is. But like, for example, R. Kelly. Nope. I'm no, not gonna stop one, listening to Ara. I'm not. I'm. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean I can know what he does. That, that doesn't mean I can know what he does. I don't mess with Chris Brown, but and I'm, his music I'm, is also his music. Excuse me, Christopher Maurice. 
Christopher Maurice Brown, okay? Mm. He, oh, Ooh, don't be a stand now. Don't be a stand. Oh, girl, you, oh, girl, you that I'm saying, You a stand. <laughs> but I remember when he came to our, um, he came to Atlanta one time at the club when he had first came out. I mean, Run It was hot, fresh, <laughs> yeah. and he started singing Yo, and he was holding my hand at the club because they opened up the club for a bunch of teenagers to go in for the radio station, and he held my hand, and we had a connection. Okay, Ooh, and from you that are moment standing on, hard. <laughs> and from Ooh. that moment on, sim- no, I can't. Sim- <laughs> I can't. But like further, like I can separate the person from their art, and that's to say the same. Like there are some Christian artists that have done some terrible stuff and reneged on being Christians, but that doesn't have anything to do with their art, the music that they put out at the time or whatever it was that the person put out at the time still touched me, still moved me, and so I can separate those two. But to the main topic, so again, I too have locks um, and I don't care who gets them. Me. I don't care. It's your hair. I know my locks look good. Right. And I have really fine hair, and I know the struggles that I have with my locks. Like I have some that thin from like the root, like where they grow it, because my hair is fine. And so I can only imagine a person who is Caucasian that does not have thick hair, because a white person can have thick hair, or a Asian person can have thick hair, or they can have fine hair. I can just only imagine though what that looks like on thin hair. And I saw his. Uh, locks and they His don't French look fingers well, but French he fingers. just started them too so they haven't had the time to mature like maybe ricky's and mine i only have mine like two years they barely matured they like yeah. adolescent at this point <laughs> right. but like i'm pretty sure that if he interlocked them or did something else like you it could turn out to be nice i don't care he, that he, he doesn't have lock experience too Right, like I don't, I don't well, think no, I that don't that, that is cultural appropriation because we, as African Americans born in the United States, culturally approach appropriated that from those who were born in the Caribbean. Okay, and so if we're gonna talk about cultural appropriation, we have to be all encompassing and say, well, we stole that from so and so too, for the same way that you know, just heading into the main topic for the same way that back in the early 90s we was all wearing Chinese slippers or the early 2000s we was all wearing Chinese slippers and chopsticks in our hair like it was cool and we you're supposed to eat with chopsticks not put them in your hair but we there are people not we not me but there are people who get upset <laughs> with like the Korean culture for appropriating Korean hip hop and Korean R&B or Japanese hip hop Japanese R&B which is really cool by the way I suggest yeah, that you try it it is, it is really good oh my god it's really good but like oh we're, we're all doing Never it so time. where do we draw the line uh PJ as, as far as it being appropriation, I think one of the one of the key differences is, um, and I'm going to speak from an Asian perspective on an Asian topic, but I think it relates here, right? <laughs> Which is that Chinese restaurants owned by Asians or owned by Chinese are usually considered shit lunches, quick, easy meals. But high end Asian restaurants, Michelin star restaurants, are owned by white chefs. Right. Mm-hmm. White folks having dreads can probably still go to work and have a supervisor go, ah, oh, that Chad, you go to work <laughs> with dreads. It's against company policy. I do go to work with dreads and I work for the federal right. government. And things are but changing. Not, that but was that's not, where that appropriation is. Isn't that is, like a recent that, thing, though? I mean, you'd be able to do that. At least like, that maybe like insane. the military, like actual, like, I'm active. not in the military. Right, right. Their, their rules are different and they have changed, but yeah. I have purple hair. Well, the government's a little bit different. and say anything. Yeah. And I think that if, like, years ago you were actually, like, if you were, like, in government, but, like, senator status, I don't think they would, it would have been different. You know what I mean? They would probably look to you entirely different. I think it also depends on where you are. Right. Uh, but finish with what you were saying, uh, PJ. That that was it. I mean, okay. um, I think she was saying, like, I don't see it as cultural appropriation. I just want to point out that the rest of our society looks at those two things differently. A black person with dreads and a white person with dreads, right? That white kid is just kind of rebelling. That black man is is not trying to, to be a part of our group. Yeah. I've know. heard that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, Dondre, what were you going to say? Um, 
so I've really very very re like this car this topic is so interesting because very recently I had a statement on social media where I was actually talking about being bothered by seeing the current surge of people who like have fake afros. I mean, you know me, like my hair is like this big when it's picked out. So I'm like super like surprised it actually bothers me in a way. Like I understand sometimes people just want to try out a new style. Sometimes we want to go for a look, but I guess for me, it's because I did go through the trouble and the work of growing this in the past two years that it, it gets to me in a way. And to me, I guess the hair kind of has certain energy history, etc., like that. So it's weird, very weird. I, I think, but I think it always comes back to the things that people are often like, um, you know, diminished for and, and, mm -hmm. and treat it poorly for, and then someone else of another culture, like, Imitates or tries the to do the same. Look, look. We'll have to talk about them eventually. Yes, <laughs> and like they, oh, okay. like, someone from another culture decides to to do it, knowing that maybe maybe not knowing, but like decided to do it and thinking it, it's probably cool, but like not understand like like with an afro, like there's a certain image and like that you that people perceive when they see someone, especially if you're if you're um, a Black American when you think of someone wearing an afro and they're yes and so like you there's that image and like not only with that image you're, you got a stereotype that goes along with it and so why would something that i could be reprimanded and diminished for why would why would you want to take part in that like and why is it that when you do take part in it it's i don't like you don't receive the same experience that i do mm -hmm when it happens. So I, th I think that's what it keeps coming back to. Go ahead, Dodger. So when that really hit me was like um, last Halloween when people were wearing giant afros and some guy was coming to me like it was like we were, he was actually coming on me like we were bros. Like he was talking about like, oh, my brother, all this. And then he grabbed my whole afro, put his hand in it. And I was so livid. Like it, it took me for a loop. It really did. I, it, I don't know. Yeah. Um, Sam. <laughs> Um, I was thinking, it's funny that I got asked to be on this panel because I was thinking about this the other day and I, I just want, a lot of y'all might know me and a, a lot of y'all might not, but I grew, I grew up, I was kind of the anti-token, if that made sense. Like, um, T, if you remember Miss Evans, Miss Rusha Evans from North Atlanta, <laughs> she told me one day, I cannot say, I can dance, I can dance my butt off. I cannot sing. She literally told me the only reason she had me in tour show is because she needed a white person in the tour show. <laughs> that sounds like we should rest her soul. No, for real. Cause right, rest us all RP. But I mean, she literally told me that. And I my experience growing up was I guess the opposite of a lot of white I guess a lot of white people would be like, Oh, I got my I'm not racist because I have a black friend. Mm -hmm. And all your friends are black. <laughs> Yeah, all my friends are black. I was the only white one in a. In they a they big had a ass. white friend. Yeah, yes, had we all had a white friend. friend. Uh, no, for real. I mean, you know, it sounds funny, but like for real. So, I grew up getting braids, like cornrows, like. But no one looked at me like it was appropriation because it wasn't that I was. I, get, I think, I guess what I'm saying is what I, I've recently dawned on, and maybe it's true, maybe it's not, um, is, see, Santasha knows, because she was in there too. But, um, so, you know, so I grew up, um, it dawned on me the other day that I think the difference in appropriation and appreciation is your genuine intent. And I did a lot of things growing up that I think people could look at as appropriation, and I didn't get looked at that way because it was just who I just, that's just how I grew up. Like literally, it just was, it was just the culture I was in. Like literally, it was not me trying to be a certain way. It just but that's is what difference. I knew. It's, it's that's just what I knew. Though. And so that's what I'm saying. Like I, what it dawned on me the other day was, I, I think the difference in appropriation and appreciation is 
what is your genuine intent? Do you, you know, and I just Googled the word appropriation is taking, is taking someone, something else's and without their permission and using it as your own. And so for me, it wasn't like I was trying to take anything. It was just, that's what I knew. That's what I saw. That's what you did. Whether I had kinky hair or not, you, you got your hair braided. Like that's just what it was. And so and also to that point of like locks and stuff like that, my braids look good. Like they didn't look like, I, I be looking at people's locks, white people's locks and I'd be like, why? Because your hair is not, is not, it doesn't look, I don't care if you wanna have locks or not, or you, you know, it doesn't look good. Does Get it done the style right. like actually look good? And it doesn't, I'm sorry, I mean, there are very, very, very few times I've seen a white person, and, and if I have, it's been on the internet. I've never seen it in person where I was like, oh, look at their locks. You know what I'm saying? Those look good. But I guess what I'm saying is I think the difference is in your intent. And I think also, I mean, is it something that you just like to do? Like um, when, uh, what's her name Hillary Clinton went on like the breakfast club and they asked her like what was one thing she had in her purse and she was like I have hot sauce in my bag you know like if if she really actually <laughs> literally carries around hot sauce great so be it like you know what I'm saying like if you like hot sauce you like hot sauce that's not an inherently black or white right. thing either you like seasoned food or you don't so that wasn't and a reference um, she, she, it was the breakfast club. She went on, it was when she was, um, running against Trump. Yeah. 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 And I guess well, she was on back. a breakfast yeah. club interview yeah. or something. Yeah. And she, she said something about always having hot sauce in her bag. And it was around the same time that, that, uh, Beyonce Formation, song came yeah. out. Yeah. Formation came was like hot sauce. Yeah. But she, bag. she was doing like, a lot. Of, she was doing a lot of strides though. Cause she had the Well, yeah. I mean, I'm not now. saying that yeah, she but, wasn't you know, or she was, was pandering. I don't know. No, you know, well, that's why I'm curious if it was because I'm like, if she well, was referring to I mean, that's to it, my thing. Like, do you bad. literally carry hot sauce in your bag? Because if you do, great. And then right. that's not pandering. But if you don't and you're just saying it because you're on a black, you know, uh, radio show, then yeah, that's definitely pandering. Um, so I think it goes with intention. And I think it also goes with, I don't like intention or yeah. not. Like, does it even just look good? Well, I can't call Kim a Kardashian anymore because of the things that she's done in the community. So I'll give her that. But I mean, I mean, um, yeah, more prior to it, but like some I of the appropriation, issues. though, yeah. But she's doing positive things, and so I will give her that. She's using her celebrity <coughs> not just to look black, but to help out the cause of some African Americans. You said that, um, and so I support it. But the other sisters. Mm, Mm. So, P uh, P P P Alex. Yeah. Okay. P P P Alex. Okay. I, I think there's a, a big piece that, that we're not talking about either, and that's monetizing it, especially you know for, for Asian culture in particular. In Target, why is it I can find a Buddha flower pot, but I can't find a Jesus post-it holder? Yes, or Zaxby's, Come on, Zaxby's, you know, have a, a, a an Asian Asian, Zen, Asian salad with a fucking egg roll. Oh, but no, Jesus <laughs> Christ, this is a good sandwich, yeah. right? Yes. You know, or MSG. You better uh, anyway, promote my lord. But you know, so I mean, <laughs> Tell them about corporations it. are monetizing our uh, aspects of our culture. It's mm -hmm. easier for Asian culture because they can sneak that shit in anywhere they want. You can find but that's a key go point ahead. of that too, right? Because I think it's harder for, for Target to go, oh, look, we're selling BLM shirts. People will call them out quick if they did that. Oh, and, yeah, and did. <laughs> look, mm -hmm. when, it, when it does happen, right? It gets right. shut down quick when these. I mean, but with Asian but stuff, I mean, I tell my kids every time I walk through the store. Target did some good stuff when they opened up to African American okay. entrepreneurs and allowed yeah. them to sell their products, and it was multiple. So right. uh, I, I, I don't I don't think there was actual instance of them of them well, doing a, a BL, BLM yeah, uh, T-shirt. Right. I'm just saying, like, as as an example of corporations now, hopping on to the Black Lives, Black Lives Matter movement yeah. this past summer, oh, yeah, yeah. doing the 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 Black Square for your uh, profile picture. Like, 
No, like, like you got called out because we all know that stuff is performative. So, but yes, yes, uh, I agree with that, uh, Alex. All right, so here we go. All right, so first things first. Uh, when it comes down to hairstyles, I want everybody to know I am never gonna get locks because my hair would look terrible with that. So <laughs> my hair is always gonna stay at this, like there. But when it comes down to it, there are a, a lot of different cultures from back in the day that actually did have locks. So I think it really depends on what style you're going for, really. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> like the like the, the Vikings used to do uh, locks from back in the day before they were going to battle. I think somebody mentioned that in chat log. But like when it comes down to, I think some people are really hypersensitive to what's appropriation, what is it? Because I remember there was a woman on TikTok who was wearing a kimono, and they said she was accused of cultural appropriation. No, she just lives in uh, Japan. Her husband is Japanese, and she was trying to fit in with the culture, but she was still accused of cultural appropriation. Which I think that's the problem where some are just too hypersensitive to stuff like that. They aren't getting the full story. They just see something and they automatically react to it. Just because somebody might be doing that, it and I think Sam said it too, it really depends on the intention of the person. Like if you see somebody that's just being completely blatant about it, like for example, you saw Caitlin Bennett out there dressed like a Native American, you could tell she was doing it just for her own benefit. She was doing it just to get that kind of attention that's the kind of stuff that I think that, you know, needs to be addressed. Not every situation you might see means that this person is doing to be offensive. That's just my personal opinion, though. Are there cases where that could take place? Yes, absolutely. I just think it's a really depends on a case-by-case -case basis right there. And kind of playing to what uh, PJ was just saying. I'm sorry, Don. I'm sorry, Al. Don, just okay. Go ahead, Al. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. The music industry is really big about stuff like that though yeah um the music industry like you'll actually find there's quite a bit of appropriation like within there as a matter of fact there are old rock and roll artists that actually stole from black musicians if i'm not mistaken like they say like elvis uh, elvis mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh the animals as well mm -hmm. like they only wrote like one beach song boys. themselves beach boys yes like that was actually taken like chuck berry from what i understand was the original father of rock and roll and a lot of his styles got taken you know by other artists and they appropriated for themselves those are the examples that i think you know should get focused upon but as far as like what is appropriation and which one is like uh just you know, uh what's it called uh, uh appreciation, appreciation. Yeah. yeah it really does depend on the person but i just think some people need to kind of get the whole story like maybe ask some questions of that person before they just get on their case that's just my personal opinion so yeah, I believe context is really important to like, because that was what was missing in, in your example. Um, I guess the back to what your point was, PJ, it was, it's the monetization that really does a number on everything. Um, the, but because I, I, I think of like, like the things that we see that it's clearly being monetize, mo monetized by, a, through cultural appropriate appropriation like um like halloween costumes oh. and um what else gosh it's like but like even like roles in a movie where you have to like <coughs> completely change somebody's features for them to fit a certain cultural stereotype like Make and like work. right uh, yes Scarlett and like <laughs> right. Scarlett and, Johansson. yes yes but, and, but like but like these people are making bukus of money Mm -hmm. doing this thing that often like hurt the community and like uh keep pushing certain stereotypes uh julian oh well that, i think that's that was actually one of the biggest things that i was going to say is that it, it also kind of goes back to like what are you doing for the community like what it, like what what are you doing for that community that it comes from like, what, what, what 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 connection do you have to that and i think that really speaks to how genuine your 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 intentions are you know, so it's like, um, okay, so for example, uh, braids, I have braided my hair before. And, okay, and, and first of all, if anyone knows anything about me, has like has seen me before, I used to have like a lot of hair. I my hair used to be down like to my waist, like my hair. I miss that oh, hair. Bitch. <laughs> I had that good hair. I don't know what the fuck I was thinking, but anyway, <laughs> I had like all this hair, but like I, I for myself, have always like spoken, like expressed myself through my hair, so it's like always like changed. And things like that. So it's like, and I don't know. I feel like 
I feel like it is possible, like to to be kind of inspired by it and things, and and to and to still take into account all of that. But I I, I think you, it really depends on like where you where you're coming from. You know, what you where you're coming. That's why I say it's a case by case basis. It's a context. It's it's what it's. Do you know the history of it at least? And 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 whether or not like at least know what that struggle is for others. You know, mm-hmm. and be able to. What about it. Rachel Dolezal? I'm just curious. Oh my God! Isn't that crazy? She was doing good stuff for the black community, right? I mean, I mean, she these, was. I mean, but the NAACP was started by white people, so why did you have to turn? Right, make exactly. Black? But the NAACP is also is also, to be honest, like they do what they're supposed to do. What they, what they, you know, what I mean? they, they do. They, I feel like I, I hate to say it, but it's like they feel almost performative. It's like they, they, they do good things because they can't get away with not doing good things and still being the NAACP. You know what I mean? But, but otherwise, it's like, but you know, what are they doing? Kind of almost the bare minimum. You know what I mean? As far as large as they are, uh, Sam then PJ. Um, so y'all's point about like what are they doing for the culture and talking about Justin Bieber, um, you know, I always the reason I really, really love Eminem, Eminem is. Mm-hmm. I've never heard him say the N word, and I might be wrong. And if if someone's heard it or in a song or something, I've never, like, and and I just feel like, I just feel like, if you, I feel like there are white people that think they're okay to say it, and if you think you're okay to say it, you don't really understand. Like, I just don't ever think it's ever appropriate for a white person to say it ever. Period. And I'm probably one of. <clears throat> someone that could get away with it but i feel very strongly that i don't ever say it i don't say it by myself i don't say it i don't say it period she doesn't say yeah, it i don't say it at all i don't say it on a plane i don't say it on a train i don't say it in the air come on sam i am i don't say it i don't do not say it sam i am Mm. <laughs> and I feel like the yeah. white people that get that really get something different, and 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 then and I and I feel like maybe that's the defi- I mean, I don't feel like that's the defining line, but the people that appropriate feel like they have a right to say that or they can say that, and the people who really get it and understand don't. And maybe I'm wrong, and maybe I'm projecting on Eminem <laughs> when I do this, but I feel like. He is probably one of the white people that could get away with it, but he doesn't. And he and and I've never heard him say it, and I respect him a hundred times more because of it. You know what I'm saying? And I don't know. I guess I that, I just want to make that point of Bieber versus Eminem. Uh, PJ then Dandre. Uh, first, Dandre. Yes, the mirror. Um, <laughs> and secondly, I totally was, forgot. Uh, that is, I, was, I was like, holy crap. I was like, how are we going to This is know? a family show. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, but what do, I think, I, I think I, I'm thinking the three basic questions that people should be looking at, all right? It's just what's, what's your connection to the culture? Um, why are you doing it? And then who the intended audience is, right? You know, my wife is, you know, we've been married almost 20 years. My, my family is Thai. We go to Thailand. We've been in Thai weddings. So she's had occasions where my, my aunts have dressed her up in traditional Thai garb. But we talked. She's like, I was really uncomfortable. And I was like, I get it. But, she, you know, but in that context, she was invited into the community to take part. She was yeah. doing it for Thai people. That was the why. And that was the audience. You know, um, you know, so why, the why is a big question. Monetizing falls in depth, but that's it. That's what I wanted to say. Dodre. Um, so as Sam was saying, I think it's also majorly recognizable for the Eminem point because the whole beginning of his career, he was deep in like his abuse with um, alcoholism and all that. And through all his pain, he never went on any direct approach of using that word at all like it's so funny that he's able to like be conscious and aware of that with all of it was going on in his life it wasn't necessary in his rap at all yeah. because he wasn't talking and about he, us he was talking and, about his life and he exactly. still so i'm was not giving loved, him kudos for that right and oh. he still made hella yeah. money in an industry that was not I'm, I'm not giving him kudos for not 
saying the N word because I was he's a rapper. What no, because he's what? talking about his life. He said worse things than that. He talked about killing people. The whole Stan song is about killing somebody you are obsessed with. And he takes his girlfriend with him <laughs> who is pregnant. He talks about wanting to kill his ex-wife. He talks about wanting to kill his mom. <laughs> like, yes. So I'm not excusing him for not saying the N-word. Like, woo He wasn't talking but, about a black struggle. He wasn't talking about black people. He was talking about his life and his life experience, which didn't have anything to do with black people. But I'm just concerned. I'm literally just connecting it to other white rappers who do the exact same thing he does and do say the N-word, like Machine Gun Thank Kelly. Thank you. And it's so not he, okay. Sorry. Again, everybody might not know how I feel about the N word. But I think what she's saying is that we don't actually know whether or not he would actually say that because he never uh, right, or, rapped, or maybe it's never like, rapped about not, I'm not saying the N word is the bare minimum here. His, his rap right. never, never really included black people for in order. Well, well, for but, I, but but I think the overall theme okay. of that is that like saying the N not saying the N word is the bare minimum. Here, yeah. like that's that's like okay. I agree. Yeah, I'm, not saying it I'm never saying it. it. I'm not saying it should. I'm just saying I think there are two different white people that define themselves as allies. I think I there are people if... that appropriate and think it's okay. Oh, because I'm in the culture, so I'm doing this and it's okay. And I think those are the people that end up appropriating versus appreciating. Yeah, and I'm just drawing the parallel between those two, and it may not be the case. I don't know. But I do yeah. know there are two very different white allyship as far as when it comes to the black community. People that think they're not racist and they've never been racist and they really help and they think it's okay to say the N-word when they're in the car by themselves rapping a song versus, and maybe that's not the parallel. Maybe and it's just not a projection. Black person, I don't care. Me, me, and I'm not a representative for all black people. I don't care. If you in your car, and you're not black, and your favorite Jay Z song comes on, and he's saying nigga, 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 that's on you, cause I don't care. I don't no, have I'm to receive it. that. I, me, am not offended <clears throat> because you're not talking to me. You're not addressing yes. it to me. I it's not being directed towards me. Okay, so I'm not offended by that. If Machine Gun, I don't even know who Machine Gun Kelly is, but whomever this guy that's is, okay. if he rapping and he be like, uh, uh, what an A, and he says it, okay. That's your business. Somebody made that acceptable for you to say, right? Or you've been in the culture so long, right? Like a you, just because you make the choice not to say it. Like if you did say it, I wouldn't be like, oh, Sam, no. <laughs> like I wouldn't care. I have Me. Friends, not I a have spokesperson, friends not a representative. I have friends who have given me permission to, and I still, I, I won't. They beg but that's me, and I'm you, like, I won't. And that's okay. But if somebody did say it, I, me, I choose not to take offense to it, because you're not talking to me. Now, if you're addressing mm -hmm. me, that's different. And that's when I can choose the ownership of taking offense, right? But offense is a thing that we choose to take on. And I choose not to take offense in <clears throat> somebody else using the N word, because I told you, I'm, told the story many a time before I was one of two black girls in a predominantly white sorority here in, in New Mexico and it is a national organization and um, I was at a fraternity party and and this happened more than one occasion but a song came on and everybody is like hey hey going off and again one of two black people <coughs> and probably one of five black people in the room if it was that many everybody else is white or like some sort of Latino. I live in New Mexico, I'm gonna assume some sort of Mexican-ish version, okay? Did I did I be like, huh, I'm offended. They're saying the N-word, I'm leaving this party now. No, because nobody was mm -hmm. talking to me. You're gonna say it whether I'm in the room or not. It's up to me how I choose to receive mm -hmm. it. I might look at you funny for a little bit. Right, but I'm not gonna be like, yeah, okay, whatever you're talking about. And that's exactly now, it's how I different if you yeah. walk up to me and be like, Nigga, then you I might know. not finish the rest of your then sentence. Got, then got the best. I'm just saying, like, like, if like, you're not talking to me, I'm not, I'm not gonna take offense over something. But, you want, like, but yeah, obviously, you want to, you, you want to allow that to happen to someone else either, right? I think it's yeah. Just, no, I'm not. I think gonna, it's just more like brought into like the, the mm -hmm. a negative connotation of it, you know? right? And any like, that's any sort of racial head. slur. Or anything like that. I feel like at this point, you're just you're bullying somebody. So it's like you know, obviously, like it's gonna be poorly. Okay. 
Uh, can you go to, back to Lance's question real quick? I want to uh, answer that if I uh, could. Oh, yeah. Wait, yeah. wait. So, like, this one right here? Nope. Like, before that. Before if you the... Want, ask oh. me if I want to try Dread, so... Oh, that one. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so, I'll put it to you like this. I'm very, very insecure about my hair, so that's the only reason why I wouldn't try it, but if it looked good, I'd probably keep it, though, because, you know, I my the name, origin of my name is German, so I would be... I'd rock... If it looked good on me, I would rock the hell out of it, but... The only problem is though, I'm six foot tall, 185 pounds. I look like a rail. I don't know if it'd look good on me. <laughs> it's only because like, I'm just afraid of like how I would look. That's the reason why I don't do it though. Cause I used to hate my, I, my hair used to always just be straight buzz cut all the time until one of my friends says, well, hey, try a little duck tail. And it's like, oh, hello. I'll, I'll go yeah, back. It's a little different. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it's just it's not like that. I, I just, I, no. uh, anyway, I just, I'm, I'd be more apprehensive about stuff like that. So, PJ, you locking it up? Yeah, I'm, yeah, sure. Um, no, I, I wouldn't. Uh, for personal reasons, I don't like. It. I've, I've heard black folks talk about how painful going through some of these processes are, and my personal choice for fashion and dress is very practical. I don't like you being. Okay. Uh, and and on top of that, I don't feel at all connected to anything that would ever push me to get dreads so i, I don't have a a yeah no no the answer is i wouldn't do it ricky your face is frozen and so <laughs> frozen Real i want to know if she's laughing oh my god yes, stop. I'm I'm yeah. 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 Grand. your face <laughs> saying it all right now. <laughs> <laughs> The most judgmental. No, <laughs> I think she's yes, gone. Like she even we're her, gonna wake up tomorrow, and she's gonna be a new meme on the internet. Oh, your computer <laughs> died. Oh, oh, we love oh, <laughs> I have okay, one more point on back. Justin Bieber, which I think oh, is horrible. Okay, we will. Let's let's. So here's go the thing, it. though. What All if? He's allowed to grow, though, as a person. He, Wait, yeah, so that's yeah. what I was thinking, too. He's like, allowed to grow. He's allowed yes, to have yes. said and done some things and made some mistakes in his oh. past. Even as simple mm -hmm. as being, not saying that racism can be excused, but he's allowed to evolve and grow from what may have been taught to him. And I'm not for excusing his behavior at all. That may have been a learned behavior. And as he grew up, he was like, oh, man, maybe not. Now, I don't. I feel like Justin Bieber is just like a Miley Cyrus to me. They're culturally appropriate. And here's why. Because you're married to a white girl. Okay? You talk about all this, oh, I love black people. I love black women, foreign, blah, 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 blah. And then you married a white girl. It's the whitest of white. Ah! And so, <laughs> so then what you're saying to me doesn't matter. The same for Justin Timberlake. And I, yeah. well, I stand oh, God, Justin, Justin, okay? Justin I stand Justin since the NSYNC bleach blonde crunchy uh, ramen noodle hairstyle days, okay? <laughs> but just you grew up in the South and you grew up with that type music, but you used it to further your career. And then you came out with that trash album, Man in the Woods or Lost in the Forest, uh, whatever it was called. The fashion and collection it had, like, is The biggest thing is don't get back either, you know? It's that community yeah, community like you can't flip back and forth. Like Robin Thicke stayed loved, in his lane. I love lane. this and then not, and not say true to it. You know what I mean? If you, if you grew up with like R&B and that's why, and that's why, and that hip hop, and that's why it's so influential to you. Why aren't you giving back to that community? Or aren't you still invested in that community? You're not. Exactly. You're making money and now you're like, like, oh. He's on the phone now. Robin Thicke <laughs> stayed in his lane. He sang mm. black music. He <laughs> married a black woman. She was half black. I don't care what y'all say. Part is part. We claiming her. Even the new chick. I, she either She's either like the Kardashians or she's also half and, and half black and something. He stayed in his lane. He didn't appropriate. He stayed in his lane. Justin, you didn't do that for me. I fully expected you to marry a black girl. Like I, I, I in my mind, <laughs> it was gonna be Rihanna and Justin Timberlake for life. Maybe, maybe what? not, but something like that, like somebody exotic. Somebody I don't want that. That's like foreign. <laughs> not it's not Rihanna like herself. But we don't like, want that. Okay. Somebody that's like that. Like you like know, that. like Bree is very unproblematic, and I expected him to be with an unproblematic African American woman. Nothing against Jessica Jessica Biel. Right? Jessica? Yeah, that's Jessica her name. Biel. Yeah. Wait, is that who he's married to? I yeah, the girl from Seven Heaven. Oh, wait, is that yeah, her? Like, that's her, right? Yeah. Nothing against her. 
nothing against her. She's cool. She's pretty. But even like, uh, what's his name? Sam Hunt, the the body like a back road song. I sing his wife. Ain't no curls on that <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Makes me louder. upset. Say that a little louder for them. <laughs> Ain't no curves on that back road. Oh, it got maybe a bend, like a slight turn. <laughs> Not even a full turn, just like a slight <laughs> And that's it, okay? Uh, so those oh, things bother me because like PJ said, you're monetizing right. and you're talking about like, that's not what I think when I think curvy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like I think Erica Badu when I think curvy, Jill Scott when I somebody say curves and I'm like, oh, Beyonce. <laughs> yeah, but you need a better car to handle those curves. Ooh. All right. Not a picture. Like, <laughs> so I have a question though. So like it, with, with Justin Bieber, um, Julie, you had mentioned his his recent album just came out, which called is called Justice. Which is and also it's, funny it's, because it's, it's called Justice one? and it's all about redeeming himself and all yeah. that stuff. So as we're talking about, oh, well, he should be able to grow. I mean, I suppose, but he's also very much monetizing off of it. Yeah. Right. Oh, because because it has like snippets of like MLK speeches, oh. like little interludes throughout his, his album, but like very Sorry. little of it has anything to do with like justice like social justice and yeah. like but you're like you're 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 making a profit or trying to pretend like you're down when like when he got some backlash for this album like he's like i really didn't know like the the brevity of like of this of what i was doing we use these clips and it's like you know, I guess because he's saying because he's from Canada, he didn't learn about this stuff, which I get, I understand. But you've had plenty of time to to do some learning at this point, especially with the the people that you surround yourself with. No one thought to be like, "Hey, maybe maybe we need to." Um, His wife is this. white. Her family white. He's surrounded right. by the people. But I mean, if Travis, right? But, I mean, but, but, like, like this is why. Say something. Yes, because I expect Travis Scott to be well versed in African American history. No, I'm just saying he's. Oh, sorry, I'm so sorry. He still <laughs> followed it up with an EP called Freedom. So, mm, yeah, okay, um, I didn't, I didn't care because there was a big time with um, Justin Bieber. He actually had a point where, um, remember when Sorry was a big thing? Um, he got interviewed on like the origins of the song and. If you actually listen to the background, it was actually produced um, completely in a reggae reggae tone, um, the instrumentation and everything. And he tried to rename it as his own genre, like tropical <clears throat> funk something. I don't remember yes. what he said. Yes, but this that's shit. <laughs> yeah, let's tell funny. them how you feel, Julie. Oh, I'm trying to take my shit. I love it. Like, are you kidding? That's my fucking genre. Like, how dare you? How right. dare you try to like whitewash it? Oh, PJ. Yeah. So on, uh, so we're talking about music on the on the. I guess the right side of doing things is Paul Simon, right? It's older. He's been around for ages now. But from what oh, I yeah. understand, he began to embrace like African or tribal yeah. more more like, like my music. But he didn't just take it and do this shit in a studio in L.A. He traveled to Africa, met with these musicians, brought them into their studios. Like he didn't, you know, he didn't take their culture and bring it to the States. He took the time to go and, and I feel like he honored the music in a much better way, a more appreciative way than somebody who's just taken MLK clips to put into the intro of their song. That was a Graceland album, actually. Graceland album was very known yes. for that. Actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I listened to that album like many, many times. I love it. It's a great album. No, no, I'm a Jesus person. I'm, I'm here for Jesus the Christ, okay? I'm surprised nobody has brought up the cultural appropriation of the LGBTQ musicians being appropriated and not being recognized <laughs> and acknowledged. Like your big freedom. So many. Who Beyonce sample in the song Formation was in Louisiana and did not include, I don't know how he ident the person identifies, <coughs> he, she, Big Frida, did not include Big Frida in any of it when that's, that's his voice. Or Drake in the song uh, Nice For What, also him, her. Yep, 
Big, Big Freedom has many times like yes. been sampled or like used in like media without being credited. So right. many times. So, I mean, I'm surprised nobody has brought that up. That is still cultural appropriation. It is of somebody's <clears throat> identifying culture. I'm gonna segue and go grab my daughter. She's oh, not Andrew too. Wilson um, was blocked. Oh. Yep. Well, you know, when you got have folks on here that that literally yeah. travel and find folks to, to troll, I you know, I don't have time for that. So I just, just didn't I didn't expect it to just pop up there. That was oh. oh, yeah. It happens. It happens. So um give me one second guys. I am going to switch over and hopefully be be on my computer instead of my <laughs> So I'm trying to improvise here. Yes, yes, yes. Whoa. Oh, we lost it for a hot second. Okay, well. Oh. Yep, there we go. Oh, look Transition. Look up. Look at that, girl. That's yes. we, we got we got to uh, we got to make it work somehow. Okay, cool. So, um, Rakia, you're still on your phone. Turn that phone off. No, I got it. Hey, hey, no, 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 no. There you go. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yep. All right. Let me just shut this off. No, but for real. Um, oh, baby. Yes. Beautiful. Oh, look at that sweet baby. Oh. Yes, yes, yes. Um, thanks, Julian, for helping me out with this. Okay. So, um, so I, I think like we have to get back to like intention. This is a yes intentions. I always, I always err on the side of caution with intentions because you know, the road to hell and all pain <laughs> and whatever. Um, That's the word. Call me when you want. Right. So um I I kind of like err on the side of caution with, with that, but also like understanding the the culture and the significance of um of, of the things that you're trying to partake in. And yes, I I, I understand this. Um Jermaine says uh just to be where used to be surrounded by Usher and Luda. Yes, mm -hmm. I I understand that. Um so you would assume that they would have taught him something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but Usher and Luda, I don't think are those people, to be honest. Luda ah. is a little bit that person. Are no, Luda was that person. Usher, I don't know about him. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know about Luda would have. Yeah. I don't think, but I don't think, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. He was surrounded by Usher and Luda, but definitely more Usher than Luda is my point. So like, I don't think, I don't think he really got that reception. I don't think he really got that, uh -huh. that, that education, rather. Do they still hang even out? Though, even though he was around. I don't, so. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know because uh, because for a good while Justin was like in Atlanta where Usher and Luda normally yeah, are. Also, like he was also like partying and things like that. He was, right. Like, I mean, he was like learning but, about like you know the deep south. But uh, I mean, but he the thing is like he was a child. Yes. He was like he was literally. Child. I would say he was a child when he was came out. Yeah. When he yeah. Was, so was he, there was there friendship? Before. Was their friendship arranged by managers and was more transactional? They, he, got, he got what he needed out of these two black guys, and so boom, well, he's off. I think Usher was a mentor. I think Usher discovered him. Well, he was I mean, a mentor. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I, look, I would assume that they would still have some kind of like long-standing like relationship where mm -hmm. they at least talk. I'm, a, I'm assuming. I don't know their relationship. I don't know them like that. Well, I feel but, like they called out. But you know, considering that you've had you kind of brought someone in as a child and but i guess like you know people still weren't he still wasn't taught and didn't feel like he needed to be taught so who knows um oh no lance he said us just giving him fake you. pills thank you hey so, Rick, yeah, has, has, lance yes. on, has lance been on this program before because i think you need to get lance on here oh, he's he boy, has, i've been waiting for him to come back he's, has he been on before i think he may have been on before but yeah he was on once all yeah, right, but he's he's been in the comments yeah. lately, so um, yeah, um, I just I don't know I, just, I I'm not sure how I feel about all this, um, I but it's a very fine line, and like I would say, it's very situational. It with, with the it, it is it is all right. So what I want to do after that that sweet bout of like technical issues, um, I want to go to a quick commercial break before we get into our final thoughts so um and just kind of see what else is going on in the world of Bonelli media the city girls didn't get on simply because they're amazing at rap people Obviously. like 
Don't do that. Ooh, don't, don't, don't do, do that. that. As, it, as per that clip that. I sent in the group chat, y'all saw don't do the that. performance was not giving what it was supposed to get. <laughs> don't do that. Don't you it. ever talk <laughs> about Carisha and JT. I don't care what you got to say. Don't do that. Okay, and my point is this. They got some bops, okay? So, That's they do got some bops. My point is this. And, and they're getting better, but my point is this. People like JT and Carisha and Cardi B because of who they are. Their we personalities. Like, we like who they are. So the thing that brings them revenue is their lives. Because Cardi B got on Love and Hip Hop because of her lives. And Carisha and JT are, it's, we love their friendship. That's what people like about the City Girls is their friendship. The Springer's Outdoor Theater Festival rides on with the best little whorehouse in Texas. A country western musical with modern sensual appeal. Join us and laugh, cry, hoot and holler, all while sitting underneath the stars. Wrangle your tickets now by visiting springeroperahouse.org. Best little whorehouse in Texas plays April 29th through May 9th only at the Springer Opera House. All right, so we just saw a extremely, it felt like a extremely long clip of yeah. um, <laughs> Monelli Media's new uh, newest podcast, newest uh, show, <laughs> Sip and Kiki, which you can um, find on Sunday night at 10 p.m. after we're House, Housewives of Atlanta and Married to Medicine. Um, we did not have an episode last Sunday, um, but I believe because this is like the second part of the um, reunion episode for Real Housewives of Atlanta, they're definitely going to be on the Sunday at 10 p.m. Um, YouTube, Twitch, Facebook Live, so definitely check them out. Also, that last one is um, for Best Little Whorehouse in Texas, uh, the Springer's production which I believe this is opening week where you, you will find Durie part of the cast there. So uh, shout out to him. He's at rehearsal right now. Um, so doing his thing, but uh, you got, if you're in Columbus, Georgia, come support the state theater of Georgia, the Springer, AKA the Spranga, the Spranga. And uh, they're doing some really great things. They've been doing some really great things like for a good chunk of this pandemic where they have had outdoor theater. Um, so they, they've they been able to try to, they've been able to like keep the swinger going and they've been able to set this new season for them uh, with creating an outdoor uh, theater for people to come and get some art and culture into their lives because that's probably one of the biggest industries that's been hit by the COVID oh, pandemic is right. fine arts, theater departments, musicians, concerts, all those, all those people that work in the arts have been hit hard. And so it's really nice to see the Springer be able to <laughs> pull something like this off. Um, and they've done quite a few things with their outdoor theater. So if you're in Columbus, Georgia, go definitely check out Springer, check out the Springer. And if you're here anytime soon, check out the best little whorehouse in Texas. All right. So now we are going to get into our final thoughts. So I want you guys to uh, go ahead and think about, it could be from anything, the main topic tonight or things we talked about in current events. And what's your takeaway from tonight's episode? I want to start with Julian. Okay, so um, all right, my, my main takeaway from tonight's episode was, uh, I, I think uh, for cultural appropriation at least, it's very, like, there is a very fine line. It, it's very situational um, as like a creator and as like an artist myself and stuff. Like I, 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 there, are, there are a lot of passes, you know, because because the different cultures are beautiful. That you know, you, you want to appreciate them, which is the whole point is appreciation versus appropriation. Um, I think it's, it's just it's, it goes a lot about your intent, um, how you how it, how you are connected to that culture, and then. Um, 
just what you plan on doing afterwards, you know? It's like, this is, maybe this is, maybe this is your step in, you know, this is the, your first instance of, of doing something like this, but this is something that you actually want to pursue, like this is a culture that you actually want to know and things, okay, but then make sure that you're you follow through, you know? And we can excuse that first one perhaps, but make sure you follow through as well. Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, thank you. This is Julian. You can find him on IG at Bad Juju. So that's B A with two D's. Juju, J U J U. And you can also find Julian every other Monday on Geek Now. Yes. So and like we just had an episode this on this Monday talking about the Falcon slash uh, Captain America and the Winter Soldier. So if yes. you haven't been able to, uh, yes, with Andre as a guest. So if yes. you haven't listened to that episode, go ahead and yes. check it out. But also, I think our next episode, okay. we're talking about the best and worst movie musicals. So uh, make sure you set your calendar for that. <laughs> All right. So let's go on to Alex. All right. Well, I just want to say uh, great panel tonight. Um, I don't really talk as much because I like to hear what everybody else's input is, has to be. So that's why I, I didn't talk as much. But uh, I just want to say I appreciate everybody's input tonight. Um, I'm going to give another example of cultural pro uh, appropriation. It's something that's actually been taking place on Twitter. I don't know if anybody's familiar with uh, uh, Mr. Controversy Nick Fuentes. <laughs> um, well, he's basically getting blacklisted all over the place. He's not allowed to fly. He's like on a no-fly list. But he posted on Twitter, right? When you think about it, I'm actually being treated worse than Rosa Parks because at least she was able to sit on the bus even if I it was in the back. I'm like – are you i was like dude you're nowhere near rosa parks honestly because like but this guy honestly feels like this Ooh, what a cringe. Like, yeah it's 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 really bad like it's it's like one of the worst examples like that's of current events as well but he honestly feels like he is a victim of something even though he was at the capitol on the sixth and you know he was you know stoking the fires of it but anyway um i do appreciate once again, I appreciate everybody's input, and I'm glad that, you know, everybody was able to collaborate, come together, and to kind of exchange ideas and find out, like, you know, what they believe in. And it's just, it, it, this is healthy. This is a good conversation to have right here. So uh, thank you once again for having me on. I appreciate it. All right, it. thank you. This is Alex. You can find Alex on Twitter at the A Kirsch Project, as in, like, short for project. So that's uh, A. K I R S C H Proj P R O J. And then you can find him on TikTok at N7 Smoke27. Um, thank you so much, Alex. All right, Mr. Dondre. Okay. Um, first things first, I just want to say, Alex, I love your pop filter. Your mic sounds so good. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you. Thank you. My wife got it for my birthday this last year, so thank you. Oh, that's oh, a good one. wife. I love my wife. She's my best friend, so Aww. I brag about her all the time. I'm not. I'm not ashamed to brag about my wife. So anyway, please, I'm sorry. Aww, I love it. We love to see it. We love to see it. But I'll definitely say today was a good conversation. Um, one thing I definitely just want to add, like I feel like a lot of times when we're talking about appropriation, we don't we we directly connect it to race. I understand the word cultural kind of makes you think that direction, but there are a lot of times when things are like appropriated. Um, just say, let's say nerd culture. I was bullied for it in high school, but now it's cool to everybody because it's in rap music or something like that. Um, so there's a lot of different times when like appropriation is like definitely uh, on so many different spectrums. Um, but yeah, I appreciate everybody's comments here. It actually was very eye-opening and broadening to actually share some opinions and also conflict on some. But um, yeah, thank you guys so much. I learned a lot. That's why I'm quiet sometimes because when you guys talk about America, especially Sam with the whole Atlanta jail system thing, like I, I need to know what's going on because <laughs> eventually I'm moving out there, so. <laughs> Hey, all right. Well, thank you, Dondre. So you can find Dondre on Instagram at Dre the Shadow. So D R E the Shadow. Thank you, Dre. All right. So let's go on to Mr. PJ. All right. Um. So I'll touch. My final thought will be specifically about culture vultures and my concern with uh with certain either individuals or companies like Disney or Gordon Ramsay. Um. Right. Like Gordon recently, like a year or so ago, opened up like Lucky Cat in New York and it's supposed to be this Japanese kind of fusion restaurant. The lettering for the sign out front is in English, but using font that's clearly stereotypical, like oriental. Um, Ooh, and then, you know, a chat, 
it makes it like basically he can do whatever he wants because it's it's a fusion restaurant, but he's he's co-opted this this Japanese you know the culture and Disney with Raya by taking these pieces from all the Asian cultures. I know a lot of folks are happy about it, but he you know Disney took all these pieces and made their own fake Asian country, which gives them the ability to do whatever the hell they want in the country moving forward. And Disney's been really good about taking ownership of what used to be in the public domain, right? I mean, they are owning these pieces of culture. Old European folklore is now Disney. Um, you know, Moana, the Polynesian. Right? Yeah, yeah. So that is that is like Grand Dragon level cultural appropriation, or Grand Wizard. I don't know what the term Ooh. is that they're using nowadays. Oh wow! Okay. Ooh, thank you. Uh, PJ, you can find PJ. He has a blog on the pjvong.blogspot.com uh, and right. Twitter at the PJ Vong. So that's PJ Vong Savon. Thank you so much, PJ. Um, now we're going to go to Miss Positivity. Yes, you girl. Me? Oh, <laughs> No, I was muted. Just in my home moment. Anyways, um, what is it? Can I have my case to my your pods? No. Children. No, you Children. cannot. Okay. No, you may Children. not. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, I just, I just want to say that um, be mindful when we culturally appropriate things because it is not limited to black appropriating white things. It is. Mm -hmm even African Americans appropriating African culture. Yeah. yeah. I hear that twice. Yeah. Um, mm. So it happens everywhere. We just have to be careful that our appreciation doesn't become monetized, that we don't give back to what we were inspired by. Um, and so I really enjoyed tonight. I always enjoy you guys. Yay. Um, my girl. She don't know that, but she is. No, no, we here. We here. We here. And, uh, and PJ is like my uncle. He don't know that either. And so, um, <laughs> from now on, it's Uncle PJ. Just it's going to be what it's going to be. And uh, I. I well, that, that means you got a niece, another niece to spoil, PJ. You got another niece to spoil. <laughs> She is currently wreaking havoc in my guest room and eating my oh. my AirPod case. Oh no! Oh my god! Send help! Send help! I mean, yeah. toddlers are terrorists. I'm sorry. <laughs> I yelled back uh, in the airport. I don't really uh, social media. I'm taking a hiatus to get my life together, and I've been enjoying my free time. But you guys can find me on here, and uh, again. Yes. <laughs> If you ever want to get to know my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the opportunity is always uh, welcome. And I don't have a church or to... organ. Um, I don't have a church organ. <laughs> tea. You can't just start you doing a call to the altar. <laughs> yeah, but and I, just, I don't I have just a ham and nearby to the start. Yeah, the start. not not forcing uh, my beliefs on anybody, but you know, Jesus is Lord. That's what I believe. If you don't, that's your business, and that's okay. I respect that, but Jesus is Lord, and I enjoy you guys. All right, thank you, Miss T. All right, Sam. <clears throat> hey, everybody. Um, first of all, thank you, Rakia. You did an awesome job at the last minute, and I always enjoy this panel. Always, always, always. Um, I think at the end of the day, I mean, yeah, I do think intention. That word intention is, um, it's a dangerous road, you know. But I, I do think, I think it's just. Is it genuine? Do you genuinely love and really love to do what you're doing? Or are you just doing it because you think it's cool? And whether that's your intention or not, like where, where, you know, is it genuine? And I think if that's, um, if we're talking about appreciation versus appropriation, I think that's what it comes down to. And I also think that can be, um, uh, expounded to like conversations like it's okay to talk to people and really not understand racism it's okay to be like I don't understand why y'all think this is happening and I don't see it if you really if you really don't see it and you really are trying to understand and really open to that conversation great but if you're just someone out here that's like oh that's not happening and you know 
then again, I think it just is how genuine are you in in whatever you're doing? And if it is really truly genuine and if it's done out of respect, that is always gonna be where it's appreciation versus appropriation. Right. All right. That is uh, Miss Samantha Harden. You can find her on IG or Instagram at Sam Sells ATL Homes. Uh, and then you can find her uh, gummies at IG uh, Marley Bear. So M A R L E Y, like Bob Marley Bears ATL. So thank you so much, Sam. And then also, if you're in Atlanta looking for a home, hit your girl up. Hey, right? Hit yes. Your yes. All right. Okay. So I guess it's my turn now. So, um, you know, looking back on everything and that we've mentioned and talked about, I think that one of the biggest things is um, understanding that for a lot of people, these things aren't just, it's not just food. It's not just hair. It's not just a piece of clothing it's not just a religion or a practice like because you know we can get into a conversation about if we had the time to consider like what if yoga is considered appropriation um right now i mean think about it though but but you know right now it's it's a hot it's a hot thing to do but you can consider appropriation too and so understanding that um that these things that we might think are cool and then we want to demonstrate or share like they are part of others' cultures and that if you if someone reaches out to you and be like, hey, mm, I don't think you understand the significance of these things, of this practice, of this food, this clothing or whatever, this teaching and and like you're not willing to learn or at least um, accept that you may have been in the wrong in that case. And that's, this is where it gets, I think it gets, this is where I think intention starts to like not really matter. So how do you respond to like the fact that you might need to learn, like truly learn and, and, and study what these things that people have issue with. Um, so make sure that we're always lifelong learners and making sure that we um, understand these the our cultures it doesn't have to be a gatekeep thing but if we're going to partake in others cultures we need to make sure that we understand and well versed in it before we start you know doing it for funsies and making money um so that is tonight's episode of talk it out so it's a place where those with different opinions and views come together and discuss uh different things and get to come to an understanding and what's the phrase it's not always about who's wrong or right but it's just about being heard so um thank you so much everyone make sure you come back again next thursday for another night of talk it out and make sure you like and subscribe to our channel share this share this uh broadcast with your friends and family and we want to continue to grow the well nelly media family so um I want to thank my panelists tonight so for so much for um, being very under understanding and flexible and um, definitely having my back. So I appreciate y'all. Okay. Thank you so much. So good night, everyone. <laughs>